Welcome back to Silas University. Oh. Bet you're surprised to find us here after that whole fleeing thing. Or at least surprised to see you making another video instead of snuggling up with your nice, warm... Mm, uh, whoa there, lady killer. Recording the PG-13 version of our happy ending here. PG-13, how incredibly dull. Update now, smooching later. Anyway, turns out escaping Austria across the Alps, not as easy as the sound of music made it out to be. Between the moving chasms and the freakball blizzards and the Styrian villagers with torches and pitchforks, we were forced to return to campus, but only until we can get back to the library and research up Escape Plan 2.0. In the meantime, we get to enjoy these swish new digs, which Carm just scored by saying some spectacularly violent things to the psychology TAs who were squatting here. But Laura, you say, wasn't there some business with an evil dean? and a light demon that demanded a sacrifice with a very hard to pronounce name that Carmilla heroically slew, which turned out to be less a light demon and more the shiny lure on the forehead of a very enormous and now very angry anglerfish god rising from the caverns below the theater building to devour the campus? Well, yes. Thing is, the anglerfish god is rather big and uh, the Crater where the Lustig used to be is rather small, and so it kind of got stuck. Which means that the campus is saved. Sort of. <laughs> what? So I'm heroic, huh? When you're not threatening to vivisect graduate students. Well, you'd think if I was some noble warrior goddess that I'd be entitled to a little more adoration from my wide-eyed maiden fair. You are unbelievable. I guess I should just be happy you haven't found some brand new crusade to be on. We've been here for, like, an hour. What kind of trouble do you think I could possibly get into? Oh, I have all kinds of thoughts about that. Hey guys, so the library's a no-go. Nobody's been able to get in for days. Uh, Pear's gone to see if anybody at the student paper knows what's going on, which means that I get a break from the what pronouns do we use if interrogations. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt anything. Excellent. Leave now. Lock the door. <laughs> Don't listen to her. Vampire seductress here is just crabby because I'm not falling for her 17th century idea of game. Mm. Sure. But more important than your twisted courtship ritual is how did you find this place? It's amazing. There's a hot tub in her bathroom and... Yeah? Like half the rooms have secret passages, which we should probably board the hell up, but still pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Do we know who used to live here? Oh, um, I'm sure it was no one important. Probably just fellowship scholars or visiting professors. Lucky bastards. Come on, you've got to see the big screen in a room. We've got JP on the smart TV. No, that's okay. I'm just going to finish up the video here. Finish up the video. Sure. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Is that really what you think I was doing? What? Using my romantic wiles to take advantage of you? No! No, that was just a joke. I mean, is it a little intimidating to know that you have, like, centuries of experience as this professional despoiler of virtue? Well, yeah. <laughs> And I did have a front row seat to last semester's cavalcade of study buddies, but mm. you changed. What you did for me, for all of us, you took on your mother, you took on a god. <laughs> and maybe I am just some 19 year old girl who only passed her lit class on a vampire fighting technicality, but I still know how this story goes. Good is triumphant and evil is vanquished. And once all of the monsters are chased away, our hero leans in for her 
very much non-PG kiss and everything fades to Perry? Perry, are you okay? I... Can you see where the blood is coming from? She looks like an extra from Carrie. They're dead. All dead. Well, doesn't that sound promising? Who's dead? The newspaper staff. They were all... They, they were just lying there and there was so much blood. Is everyone all right? I heard screaming. The possibly being murdered kind, not the fun Pear. Oh my god, are you, are you hurt? No, I'm, I'm fine. No, really, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm dripping blood on the very expensive rug. We, we need to put down towels. Someone, someone should get a towel. Oh, okay. Or maybe, instead of panicking about the upholstery, you tell us about the blood. I, I, I went to the newspaper offices. They were trying to keep the students informed after all the, you know, and... And I thought maybe they would know what was wrong with the library, but when I got there, all, all the lights were out and it was just so still. Except for this dripping sound, like somebody had forgotten to turn a faucet off, so I went to go see what it was. But then I slipped in something, and when I pushed myself up, there, there was just blood everywhere, and they were all lying there. The editorial kids, the interns, all of them dead. Did you see anything? Anyone who might have done it? There was no one. And then I thought that whoever did it might come back, and so, so I ran. I just, I just ran until I got back here. Who would do this? They were, they were just some kids with a student paper. It's not even a very good one. We use it to line our specimen cages. May they rest in peace. Okay. Okay, so we'll call campus security. Do you really think any of my mother's lackeys are left on campus? Or the police! Except for the part where the official position of the Bundespolizei is that Silas doesn't exist. That's actually quite clever of them. Okay, so we'll call someone. I mean, there has to be someone to call, right? Back in a mo. There's no one to call. And at this point, we would settle for the Ghostbusters. I thought... I thought with the dean dead and the fish trapped that things on the campus would be, I don't know, better. Except now there's nobody in charge and the Summers and the Zetas and the Alchemy Club all think that they should be running the campus, which means that they're fighting again. And between the earthquakes and half the faculty having fled, things are starting to slip through the cracks. Literally. Apparently last week some of Professor Parsons' anti-space leaked out of one of the physics buildings and temporarily shifted a chunk of the campus 15 minutes into the future. <sighs> this wasn't supposed to happen. We created a power vacuum. This is what always happens. Well, excuse me for not having lived through half of European history. I was not expecting looting and anti-space and- uh... Rogue Draco Pyromaniac. And it's all our fault. You cannot be serious. We did this. We killed the Dean and we let the anglerfish rise, and then we just ran away. Left everyone else to deal with the mess. And now there's turf wars and lootings, and somebody just murdered the only people trying to do anything about it. Not the only people. Laura? No. Perry's right. We can't just run away again. Yeah, we can. That is exactly what we can do. We are not responsible for those kids. I am. Abuse. I started all of this. Maybe Silas is weird and creepy and perched precariously over a soul-sucking demigod, but we fought the Dean for this place. And then we just ran away. We gave up and we shouldn't have. Those kids at the newspaper, they could have been any of us. So we are going to stay here and figure out what happened to them and we're not going anywhere until we do. We are staying, we are solving the murders, and we're gonna save Silas. Oh, I am so gonna have to lie to my dad. Good morning, Silas University, and welcome to the Silas News Network, broadcasting live to the entire campus. 
My intrepid team and I will be giving you the stories you need to survive your day. Let's bring up the map. Currently, the Summer Society occupies the northeast of the campus, the Zetas occupy the northwest stretch, and the Alchemy Club is here in the south. We have reports of an exploding fungal conflict along the Alchemy Zeta line, so you'll want to avoid that as you go to classes. Also, you'll want to avoid the Anglerfish Crater, as it is unsafe due to earthquake aftermath and the fact that the set of the Silas Drama Club musical Antigone, Zombie Vengeance, is protruding from one of the walls. Also, please stop throwing cherry bombs at the fish. It's all fun and games until a primordial monster gets loose and devours us all. And now, today's top story. Last night, the kids at the Voice of Silas were gruesomely Sorry, but students on the South Lawn are being carried away by harpies? We have harpies? If you're crossing the South Lawn, you will want to stay close to cover as we seem to have a slight chance of harpies. Flaming arrows at the Summer's Day to border. Side effects of psychotropic fog? Gamma irradiated geckos? <laughs> Gas lake over by the Milgram Lo Localized rain of spiders. This is not working. How are we supposed to stop them if they won't stop going all War of the Five Kings out there? Thank you. How did the newspaper kids handle all of this? They got themselves brutally murdered. Uh... Carm, maybe let's ixnay on the Erdard May. She's the one that found them dead. Yes, dead. For doing the exact job that you've now decided to do. Look, you have every right to be cranky. I should have asked before I turned our apartment into a newsroom, but the campus needs our help. I can't just walk away again. That wouldn't be me. And maybe <sighs> deep down, that's kind of what you like about me, isn't it? You're killing me, Hollis. Yeah, but you were already dead. Mm. Now, we just need to figure out how to calm things down before we can solve the murders. And who do we know stupid enough to stand between two angry frat armies with more weaponry than IQ points? The brothers of Zeta Omega Mu have a long and illustrious history, and we intend to reclaim <laughs> yeah, our place. Yeah, because that vampire you pledged in last semester was real oh, well, illustrious. No, they really didn't know Don't bother. That. Everyone knows this whole Zeta Peace Accord is just you making your bid for Prez next year. Look, the fact that an undead fiend masqueraded around is one of our pleasures. Proves my point about your complete lack of moral fiber. Hey, Will was an okay bro until he started kidnapping people. You're an imbecile! Okay, guys, we're going to get started. Let's get started. Let's get Samuel David Ellis. Karina Scott. Nazneen Ramanujan. Do you know who these people are? They are three of the people who were cleaning up my mess. The people who got themselves murdered while you guys were busy playing petty warlords. And we haven't been able to figure out what happened to them because you guys won't stop fighting long enough for us to catch our breath. Hey, we saved the campus No! From you didn't! Do you know who did? She did! Karm is the one who very nearly sacrificed her life, death, undeath, whatever, from saving us all from ending up as fish food. So the very least that you can do is start pretending like you survived puberty. Am I making myself clear? Can you at least agree to stop trying to pulp each other until after we've solved the newspaper murders? Well, what happens if it turns out that somebody here was responsible? What's that supposed to mean? That expose the voice did when you turned the Xerxes building into a brewery didn't do the Zetas any favors. So who's to say that you and the beef parade didn't visit the newspaper's office looking for payback? Like the in-depth history of the Adonis hunt was good for you? And they busted the alchemy nerds for illegal surveillance of campus parties. We all had good reason to want them gone. Which is why my friends and I, led by, let me stress again, the heroic vampire who saved all of us. Uh, yeah. Hi. We'll be handling the investigation. We're impartial. Impartial? You're the ones who overthrew the administration and caused this whole mess. And you're thick as thieves with the summons. Oh, yeah, from where I'm standing, they look pretty cozy with your douche canoes, too. Oh, 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 okay. Yes, me? Wilson. Me and Danny, we could be like, um, you know, uh, like, 
people here to like, um, like represent. Representatives? Yes. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but we are the logical choice. Yeah, we are. Terrific. Okay, so Danny and Kirsch will help. Everyone else lay off with the flaming arrows. And we figure out what happened to the newspaper students before anything else goes... Uh, Laura, there's kind of a group of protesters outside. Wrong. Protesters? Protesting the inhumane treatment of the giant anglerfish. Okay, just so I'm sure I'm not having a seizure, you just said... The anglerfish. That tried to eat us. They're calling her Lofi. Tried to eat us. They seem to be upset she's trapped in a giant pit with frat boys sewing firecrackers in her eye, which does sound kind of unpleasant. Wait, are you telling me you actually feel sorry for the monster who tried to brainwash you? Oh, brainwashing. Let me go check that out. Hey, fish minions, can you feel your minds being controlled? Huh. So evil has PETA protesters. Like we needed any more suspects. Fish crazy aside, do we have a truce? <clears throat> Fine. Agreed. I'm good. You know, when this whole friends with a Zeta thing blows up in your face, I'll be running for society president unopposed. And here I thought this was going to be a quiet semester. <laughs> Glad you're back, Laura. Bang face. Zena. This is gonna be awesome, D-Bear. We're gonna unite our warring bros. We'll be like Romeo and Juliet. Do you even know how Romeo and Juliet ends? Yeah, there's kissing. So that went terribly. Although no one put anyone else's head on a pike, so better than expected. I really wish you'd cut out the mythologizing. The what? Trotting me out like some prized pony. Carmilla, the heroic vampire who saved the day. But that is what you did. Not the way you keep telling it. Well, what's wrong with the way that I'm telling it? Like it were easy? Like I wasn't scared the whole time? Like it's your reason to like me? Perry. Perry, are you okay? Not really. There's a... Well, something happened while I was sleeping in the other room, and I was alone. I made sure I put all the bolts on the doors because that's what you do when your university has been overrun by vampires, but I, I, I don't know how they got to me. How they did this. There's blood. I can smell it. Perry, we need you to open your shirt, okay? We need to see if you're okay. Oh my god, what is that? It's Latin. Woe to those who follow in the footsteps of the dead, for their doom is at hand. I was dreaming. There, there was a table, but all the chairs were empty. People were coming. I was supposed to be ready, but there was something rustling behind me in the dark. And then I was on the table with the newspaper staff and the crows were eating us. And JP didn't see anything? Whoever they were, they knew to unplug them. It's a threat. Something wicked this way comes. And if we don't stop this investigation, it's coming for us. Yeah, well, if we weren't scared off by vampire cults and demigods, then we're not going to roll over for vague threats, Latin or no Latin. I hate to say it, but the Summers, the Zetas, the Alchemy Club, they were all here. They all had the opportunity. Do you really think a bunch of students, even the power mad whack jobs that run clubs at Silas, would do this? It has to be something the newspaper was investigating. We have to go back and pull everything. Notes, hard drives, everything. Follow the footsteps of the dead. Oh, I see we're low on brave but stupid for the week. Ugh, another editorial on budget cuts. Real estate and some nonsense about the Board of Governors. Oh, I've got an expose on the pineapple pies which we don't need to know or think of again ever. Why does fighting evil always require so much paperwork? Come on, research is the best part. We can scan them for JP and have them run a search algorithm. Always pleased to analyze for a good cause. And while Jeep is on that, uh, we can swab the scene or maybe take some samples from those anglerfish preservation kids. You just gotta know there's something juicy going on Stop there. Stop that! This isn't some project, this isn't fun. People are dead, again. Some thing broke into my room and cut me up. And the three of you acting like this is some Silas-themed episode of the X-Files with 
cool vampire girlfriends and disembodied sidekicks. Well, it's it's callous and it's well, cruel and hair. We didn't mean it like that. Honest. Come on. Why don't we go upstairs and clean your bloody clothes with club soda? You know how much you love soaking things in club soda? Or we can burn them in hell. Or we can do that. Hey. Hey. I've been thinking about what you said. This isn't something we have to talk about. I think maybe it is. Because do I think what you did was brave and amazing? Of course I do. But is it my reason for liking you? Whatever you were before, you were changing before you even met me. Not helping your mother. Trying to save L, Not killing us when we had you tied up for like a week. <laughs> Nine days. And you're here, researching, making jokes in the face of the ominous something's coming threats. Well, how could you not fall for me then? I'm pretty sure I was falling from you right from that stupid Zeta party. You mean the one where you ambushed me? And accused me of kidnapping? <laughs> I was, you know, terrified that you planned to eat me. But I am a little disappointed that we never got our chance to stargaze and drink champagne. Really? Because, if memory serves me correctly, there is a pretty impressive solarium on the roof of this building. And maybe something bubbly in that enormous mm. wine cellar downstairs. I'm sure the visiting professor has had impeccable taste. Uh, good morning, everyone, and isn't it a fantastic day to start taking back our university? We will start with this weird-ass letter. This thing better not be multiple choice. For immediate release. In light of recent events, Silas University's Board of Governors is returning from abroad to deal with the chaos on campus. This marks the first time since 1904 that the entire board has assembled on campus. 1904, why does that sound familiar? That's the year half the campus burnt down. Uh, who exactly are you? Didn't you get the press release? I'm Matska Belmon, chair of the Silas Board of Governors. And you're the meddling teenager who murdered my mother. You, you're the, and the dean was your- Yes, yes, and yes. And now that we've dispensed with this inarticulate sputtering, let's move directly to the part where I turn you into a red splotch on the savonnerie. Huh? The carpet, darling. <gasps> Maddie, when did you get back into town? Last night. And don't <gasps> you marry me, you little monster. From what I hear, you're up to your gorgeous neck in this mess, sis. Yeah. Sis? Well, there was a little disagreement over whether or not Mother was going to feed my girlfriend to the fish monster. I heard. So, you pried up a soul-eating sword and took a run at them both? You're lucky the damn thing didn't obliterate you. Now hold that thought. Well, I take care of little Miss Wanna Buffy. Uh, Maddie, that's Laura, the, uh, girlfriend in question. I know. And look, I'm not pretending I was overly fond of Mama and her head games myself. But your walking dinner date killed her which makes it my duty to pull her apart at the limbs. It's the principle of the thing. I won't let you hurt her. Let? Who are you kidding, kitty cat? Unless you have that thermonuclear sword stashed somewhere in your désherbié, you're out of your league. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, God. You 
went and fell in love with one of the marks again, didn't you? I, oh, love? No one said anything you about you, little no. sap. But then again, you were always in the middle of some one great romance or another, weren't you? Oh, don't need him. He's a poet. Or her. He's got such a beautiful voice. Or that one. She's just too pretty to ruin. Or that blonde corset in the 1870s that you were head over heels for. It was enough to give a girl cavities. <laughs> Fine. You like the nymph that much? I can hold off until you get tired of her. That's not the... Look, I'm glad you're not going to kill her. I believe the words you're looking for are, gee, Maddie, thanks for being so understanding. Especially since this mess means you had to leave Morocco for this ice-blasted wasteland and the implosion of Mama's ridiculous pseudoversity. Did you know what she was doing? You mean, did I know she was feeding Nemo's pal down there five people every 20 years? <laughs> of course I did. The board decided it was the smartest play ages ago. Five people every 20 years to keep that monster asleep? More people die from dog bites every year. Hell, more people die from me every year. Except it turns out it's helpless. It's not helpless. It's stuck. And I don't know how any of us got so lucky. But I'll be dealing with that tomorrow when the board meets. In the meantime, how about you and I paint the town red? It's been a while since we've had a girls' night. Not since. Saigon. Now that was a party. <laughs> you really want to be in the same state we were in after Saigon before your big board meeting? And when did you become the voice of reason? You're probably right about the board. Those old fuddy-duddies care more about Robert's rules than anything that happened in this creepy backwater. Well then, business before pleasure. Speaking of which, since I'm not turning the cub reporter into a red mist, we need to do something about these news broadcasts. We can't have gossip mongers inciting panic through the only public communication network on campus, leaving the impression the university isn't safe. The university isn't safe. See, if you had more experience, you'd say Silas is experiencing upheaval during its time of transition. You know what, why don't I come back and help you? Make sure you're putting out the right message. Uh, I really no, don't please. think- I insist. God, you're lucky. You're such a cute little monster. See you soon. Oh, and try to keep the larceny to a minimum, huh? A lot of mother's things are literally priceless. And I don't feel like tracking it down in some shabby little pawn shop. Mother's things? Why would any of your mother's things be in here? <laughs> Because you're living in Mother's old apartment, darling. Ta! There's really no reason to get so worked up. Are you kidding me? It's just an apartment. It's the Dean's apartment. We have been sitting in the Dean's chairs. We've been eating off the Dean's tables. We've been... Oh my God, we have been sleeping in your mother's bed. Ugh! It's a nice place. And we were only supposed to stay here for a few nights until you decided to play Veronica Mars again. Okay, what was that? Because it busted through some seriously thick oak doors without so much as scuffing a Louboutin. That was Carmilla's sister. Oh, well, isn't that nice? Yeah, she's Miss Congeniality as long as you like your death threats nonchalant and frequent. <sighs> Maddie isn't gonna try to kill you if she thinks it'll upset me. That's a criteria for choosing a restaurant or what color to paint the living room, not for murdering someone. Oh, and I didn't even get to the best part. Guess whose apartment this is? The Dean's? Am I right? How did you... Well, there's a statue of Ishtar in the foyer that I'm pretty sure belongs in a British museum, and the walk-in deep freeze has shackles. Well, that does explain why the decor is so intimidating. And you did nothing while the mini-dean shoehorned her way into our news broadcasts. Look, I know Maddie. Sure, she's unpredictable. Pretty sure Mother didn't even trust her. But she's not gonna want some epic battle. She's just gonna wanna do whatever she came here to do and then she'll wanna get the hell out of Austria. All we have to do is stay out of her way. And what if she's the one who murdered those kids? You heard what she said about gossip mongers and didn't you find some article on the board? She just got here, how could she? Well, what about the fact that murder is her preferred form of greeting? We're vampires. A certain amount of murder just comes with the territory. So this broadcast is gonna be fun, huh? Good morning, Silas. Joining us today is Matska Belmond, Chair of the Silas Board of Governors. Call me Maddie. Here to present the university's official interpretation. Let's just say I'm here to balance this program's pro-human bias. Or what? 
With the campus truce still holding, our top story is still the Voice of Silas murders. Care to comment on the new evidence that the newspaper was investigating the board? While the loss of life at The Voice is tragic, the Board of Governors has nothing to hide. We're here to repair damage caused by certain ill-considered actions that happened last semester and to balance the school's budget, which is in free fall due to the drop in alumni donations this semester. That's actually more plausible than I was expecting. I guess we can just move on to campus hazards. And we'll need to cut that. Let's just go with transit inconveniences. It's less inflammatory. The first item on the list is a sinkhole filled with molten lava. Which probably makes transit inconvenient. Attempted to steal several humans' faces. Acted out anxieties related to his appearance. Tried to open a time portal. Flirted with an alternative approach to chronology. Rose from their graves to haunt the living. Enjoyed a pleasant day out while making new friends. And that is all we have for today apparently. See you again tomorrow. Maybe. Now wasn't that an improvement to your usual hysterical nonsense? We're putting people in danger. Hardly. We called an airborne swarm of piranha a 10% chance of precipitation. There's moisture involved. You know, I can see why Karm likes you so much. There's something unspoiled here. That's alluring. For a while, anyway. You, hot chocolate girl. You look familiar. Have I seen you somewhere? I think I'd remember that. What in the name of Skrillex is that? Laura, you'll never believe this. I don't know what she's done, but the library's gone. Gone? Did you just vanish our library like the freaking nothing and never ending story? Can she do that? The library could. The thing's essentially a sentient Escher painting with shelves. The only question is, why would it? We were headed that way to see if we could even get into the library, and there were these men, those men, all in black, like a SWAT team, taking the books. Taking the books? Portions of the collection are being sold to interested parties to cover Silas's operating deficit. So we followed them in, and the books were screaming. The shelves were shifting around like a giant maze. Then the stacks just started crushing everyone. We decided evacuation was the better part of Valor, so we were about 20 feet back when the entire building folded itself out of existence. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Jeep, you okay? I'm fine. A momentary interruption in my power supply. Well, vanishing architecture is unfortunate. The cuts are necessary. Cuts? This is a university and you just took our library. You can't just do that. Of course I can. The board voted. Is the board chair still here? And to what do I owe the ride of the Valkyries? The school canceled the Adonis Festival. We can't afford the extra security. Hey, where's that board lady? A bunch of goons from some company are dismantling our brewing tanks. Those tanks are school property and will be sold along with other equipment from the chemical and biological science department. What? They're ruining a really rad batch of Pilsner. Tragic. How is a university supposed to function without a library and research equipment? We're doing our best to preserve the essentials. The essentials? The essentials? I'm sorry, but do you children think we're having a discussion? Do you think we're having a conversation? You might not have liked my mother, but she kept the chaos to a minimum. You idiots killed her, nearly loosed a demigod, and turned this campus into a war zone. And now we have catastrophic damage to repair and no new money coming in. So I'm gonna cut what I need to cut and sell what I need to sell, and if you don't like it, you can head for the hills, again. Carm, see you at tomorrow's broadcast. Ow, what was that? Oh, I think it was just... some kind of ultrasonic. Can you do that? Maddie's a lot older than me. And she's chair of the Silas board. That sort of thing comes with executive powers. Like we didn't have enough trouble with you. She's gutting the school. Which is probably what the newspaper kids were looking into. What are we gonna do? And that was as close to a plan as we got. Between Danny's suggestion that we should stake her, stake her, or, oh, I don't know, stake her, and Carm threatening to decapitate anyone who tried. I'm not letting Brodzilla kill my sister. We kind of hit an impasse. About the only good thing that happened was our moment of cute for the day. Hey. 
Hey, Danny's really into that festival thing, huh? Why are you talking to me, bro for brains? Well, why don't you guys just do it on the down low? I mean, that's what we do when the university cancels our stuff. I could even help. Are you volunteering to help with the Adonis hunt? Danny'd be into that. You know, that is the best idea I've heard all week. So at least one nice thing happened. Meanwhile, we have no idea what Maddie is planning on doing next or how to stop her. Are you sure it's not just disruptions in his power supply? It's not just his power supply. Hey, hey JP, can you hear me? How you doing in there? That is less of my, my, my set of pieces gone. I, I studied Latin, but I can't re 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 remember so many all dead. What's happening to him? It's the library. He's still connected to it somehow, and when it vanished... Dead. And Genevieve dead. Barbara dead. They were saints. Could we just save him somewhere or, or turn him off until it's all over? We don't even know if he could survive that. Should have known an AI would be too big for a USB key. And the only place his mind's existed without the library was his body. Which, even if we could find, is probably past its best before date. With the library gone, who knows how long it'll last. My mother, she made me a cake when I left her with curls. She doesn't have a face to send you or to send you. We need to figure out how to get the library back and help him. And that means finding Maddie, stat. Where do we even start? Well, what about that newspaper story on the board? Um, here. According to the research, Maddie and the board have been trying to sell off huge chunks of the campus to some company ever since the dean died. Ooh, legal sales on the public record. Sounds diabolical. But look, at least one of the chunks that they're trying to sell is the anglerfish. The newspaper was writing about the board and they ended up dead. And how else can you explain Maddie recognizing Perry? She must have seen you that night when you found the murdered students. I mean, it's not a lot, but it's our best lead. God, is this how you Lackwits decided to hogtie me last semester? Pretty much. You did turn out to be a vampire. How would we even get more proof? It isn't like she's just gonna drop by for tea and spill the beans to us about some diabolical scheme. Well, maybe not to us. So, yeah. We decided to have Carm make like Sydney Bristow and spy on her dysfunctional family. And at first, everything went great. Not that I don't appreciate the Tusher, darling. But to what do I owe the invitation? Well, we haven't had a chance to catch up properly. What with all the death threats and the screaming. But you like death threats and screams. Or at least you used to. Hmm. Say what you will about the Germans, they know their chocolate. Mother had a whole department dedicated to shipping it in. I'll just bet. You know she did all of this for you, right? Only the best for her little Kaiserin. Except when she was burying me alive to teach me a lesson. Well, she was always a bit mercurial. But you did help kill her, so I guess that evens the score. As if you never tried to kill her. Well, sometimes all those convoluted plots got on girls' nerves. Maddie, what's going on? You were never one for the dutiful daughter gig, so don't pretend like you're here selling off the campus like it were the last of her estate. <sighs> As if I wanted to come back here and wrangle with the Haster monks, or listen to Stradigia spout more of her drippy prophecies. But who else was going to take care of this nonsense? So I'll follow Mother's orders, as long as I don't disagree with them. The riding herd on a campus full of frightened children doesn't make it easier. At least the student body won't be a problem for much longer. Really? Why not? Look, whatever you're doing here, vanishing the library and selling off the anglerfish, it's not like you had to kill those kids at the newspaper or anyone else to keep that a secret, right? Do you really not know what's happening in that pit? You never paid attention when Mother talked business. You're always too busy with who or whatever you were enamored with, and now... And now you're head over heels for Samantha Spade. And are you really trying to pump me for information for a kid who isn't even old enough to remember leg warmers? This is what you do. But now that you're in your fourth century, maybe it's time you sort through some of those self-destructive patterns. What are you talking about? You killed Mother. 
and very nearly killed yourself, all for a girl who you've known for less than three months. There were other and reasons And now you're for rushing into another relationship, probably half because you need it to work or you killed mother for nothing. Even though this girl's a mayfly buzzing around you with her insect ideas of right and wrong. Oh, come on. Plenty of vampires have relationships with humans. We call that snacking. How can any of these girls be a match for you? The dark beauty of the world's rotting core. She's stronger than you think. Of course. When you're done playing with your food, I'll be waiting. I always am. It'll be a long wait. <laughs> I've got time. Ciao, Bella. Laura, you heard her. She's up to something with the anglerfish and planning on getting the whole student body out of the way so she can pull it off. Guess we're headed back to the crater then. I'll go get Laugh and Perry. And fine. Maybe I could have dealt better with that whole your relationship is an unhealthy time bomb speech. But we had a lead. We had to figure out what was happening in that crater. Are they still following us? I had really forgotten how much fun this kind of thing isn't. First of all, the anglerfish protest, not getting any smaller. There are at least 25 people with candles and blank expressions standing by the crater's edge. And humming. Do we have any idea what's happening there? I'm still betting mind control. How can you be so blasé about that? Once we dodged the proto-cult and climbed into the crater, we hit pay dirt. If by paydirt you mean a crew of the same SWAT guys as from the library lowering drilling equipment into a tunnel lined with these creepy carvings and talking about reaching a first gate. We hid in the set of the zombie musical to watch, but then I knocked loose a zombie arm and we had to hightail it out of there. Which was difficult, considering that someone had already collected a 150-pound duffel bag full of crater samplings. I found some materials I might need. And someone else was too busy brooding to use her super strength to help us. I helped you spy on my sister, didn't I? God, what more do you want from me? So, yeah. At least we figured out that the equipment in those SWAT people belonged to the not at all sinister sounding Corvée Corporation, a post-occult resource conglomerate. And maybe it's just Carm's family history talking, but what do you want to bet that they're down there up to no good with that giant anglerfish? Laura! 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 Oh, Laura! You gotta help me! You gotta hide me! Kirsch, what the? Kirsch, what the? Are those antlers? Did I just Mama. see? Ugh, this ought to be good. It's the summer psychos for that festival thingy. You know, at first it was cool because there was like the sexy sponge bath and and peeled grapes. And I mean, yeah, I wasn't totally down with the uh, with the headgear. Or the part where they blindfolded me and led me into the woods, but, you know, D-Bear was going to be into it, right? Except, I kind of hadn't seen her. And by the time they led me into the woods and took the blindfold off, they had dogs and arrows. And that male chick was all like, time to run, Bromeo. And I was like, this is a weird party where you just do it up like a stag and pretend to hunt him. But, you know, I like capture the flag. And maybe if I'm lucky, D-Bear will tackle me, right? But instead of D-Bear, it was dogs. Bad dogs, biting dogs, and I try yelling timeout, only there's no timeout, just arrows, totally real, very sharp arrows. So I scrammed, except that wasn't easy because they had giant pits full of pointy crap and quicksand and I had to punch a dog. Oh, when I got back to the campus, I thought it was safe. So I went to grab a brew and, and chillax. They shot my beer, man. They put an arrow right through it. They're like Terminators. Super hot, confusing Terminators, you gotta hide me! Sounds like the littlest dude bro finally drove Lawrence over the edge. No, there's no way that Danny would be- Ah, oh, Terminators! Oh. Gotcha, meat cheeks. What are you doing? I'm catching the stag in this year's Adonis hunt, genius. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but this isn't the Hunger Games and Kirsch here is not a stag. I can take the antlers off if they're confusing you! It's a metaphor, Einstein. He's only a ceremonial stag. So is he only gonna be ceremonially killed? No, that part's literal. Get out, protein shake. You really gonna make me come through these peahens? Hey! Whoa. Okay, don't hurt that. What the hell, Lawrence? Oh, just because you weren't fast enough to so get the drop on So no, this is them. about 
We don't do this anymore. How many of us do they hurt and humiliate every year? Huh? Thousands? Hundreds of thousands? Don't you want justice for of that? Of course I do. But Kirsch isn't responsible for any of that. He's just a sweet, silly man-child. And he's under my protection. Are you stopping the hunt? You know what that means. Doesn't matter. You want him, you gotta go through me. It's your funeral, Girl Scout. You are so the man! <laughs> I mean, you're the woman, you're the woman. It really wasn't that big of a deal, Kirsch. You're like my hero. <laughs> no, antlers, Kirsch, oh, yeah. you still have antlers on. Sorry. Oh God, please tell me you're not naked under that thing. Please, go find some clothes. <laughs> hey, what did Mel mean about this being your funeral? Oh, nothing really. I'm probably just out of the running for Summer Society president next year. Oh, Ruining well, our biggest festival will do that. If anything, that just makes you even cooler for saving him. Yeah. What the hell, right? We got bigger fish to fry. You guys find anything in the crater? Oh, yeah. We still don't know how Maddie is planning on getting rid of the students, but those scary SWAT guys, they belong to some giant company called Corvée, and they were talking about a first gate. So that's suspicious. Yeah, just a little. And, uh... Oh, the newspaper staff? It turns out they actually have a source for their story. One of the board members, some guy named Vordenberg. You know, I knew a Vordenberg once. Maybe an ancestor? He had a barony near my father's land. Weird family. Then again, with a name like Vordenberg. Well, creepy name or not, he's still a potential source of information. And maybe even an ally. So what else do you know about him? <laughs> And as long as you comply with the Corvée Corp officials as they take your blood and tissue samples, there'll be no need to taser you. Good night, and good luck, Silas. Who would have thought that as far as evil goes, vampire is way down the list from PR consultant. I cannot wait to get the dirt on her from Vordenberg. I've never felt so scandalized. That's because you've never been scandalous enough to scan me. Hey, what are you doing all the way over there? Wanna come cuddle and see if Olivia's gonna run away with Jake this season? No, but you can come over here. I don't know how you can be so calm, knowing that Maddie and Vordenberg are out there getting ready to do something awful. Hey. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Because you sound broody. I'm just thinking about things. Those who prefer their principles over their happiness, they refuse to be happy outside of the conditions they seem to have attached to their happiness. Sounds light and frothy. It's comforting. He understands that love doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. I think that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Hey, Laura. Yeah? Can we just pretend, just for tonight, that if I asked, we'd run away? We'd find some way to leave and we'd just go somewhere without murders or sisters. We'd sleep in hotel rooms and never live in the same city twice. There'd be no one to fail or disappoint or save. It would just be you and me in love. 
That would be nice, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> But our friends need us. The school needs us. Maybe we could be happy that way, but, you know, we wouldn't even be you and me anymore. We would just be these empty shells who ran away. Today, gentle viewers, you join me in waiting to meet the elusive Baron Vordenberg. And I've got to admit, knowing that he's a potential source of information for the newspaper kids and a member of Silas's Board of Governors has us straddling the hopeful slash terrified columns. Fun bio fact, the Baron is the great, 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 great grandson of the hero who freed Styria from the vampiric scourge. Wow, clearly he did a bang up job. Have fun with that. Having a pedigreed Van Helsing on our side can't hurt. Wow. People barge in here so much that that just sounds weird. <laughs> Fraulein Hollis. Oh, charmed. I knew a young lady very like you once. <laughs> a great love affair. Ended. Before my voice to the Hesperides was a golden apple of immortality. Turned out to be oranges, you know, so <laughs> no immortality, <laughs> but lovely juice. How fascinating. Hmm. So we're so, so happy to have you here. We know that you were speaking to the voice of Silas Staff. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. Ambitious, hardworking young people, very roll up the sleeves and gets a scoop. <laughs> Reminded me of the staff in the 1930s. Shame what happened to them. Well, we're hoping that you could uh, tell us what you told them. Maybe about the board's plans for the students or about why Ms. Belmont has those corvée guy drilling in the anglerfish pit. Oh, well, <laughs> my, my. That's not the sort of thing for a treasure, my lady like you to meddle in. No, no. I wouldn't do a, a thing for me to tell you. There's nothing can be done. But you're on the board. Oh, mostly as a formality, of course, and not to the time of the family. Had more wealth and power. Oh. With one vote, even if I object, they overrule me. It's been that way for the last 40 years. Oh, it's quite disappointing, really, even for the lesser son of greater fathers. Well, maybe if you told us what was going to happen, then we no, could... No, 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 I'm sure whatever Miss Belmont's plans are, it's too late to stop them. It's later than you think. It always is, really. <laughs> Sorry. It, it, don't mind me, I'm, I'm, I'm just hallucinating. Hallucinating what? Nobody else sees that, right? The naked vampire I killed last year is not standing behind me, right? I staked him. I really did. And he had clothes on when it happened. Am I naked? I was unaware. The, the, by Victorian standards, we all do seem to be in an undergarment. Oh, stop talking! I killed you! Oh, this uncalled can it cost you? I shall, of course, come to your defense, Fräulein! Huzzah! Everybody calm down. It's JP. Well, the library was gone and taking JP with An it. unpleasant prospect, let me assure you. He needed an unoccupied brain, and I didn't exactly have one lying around until he went to the crater and found, you know, Will. Oh my god. That duffel bag. We, we were dragging back his body? I just, I thought I might need it. For what? To Frankenstein JP into it. This has got to bother you. She, they resurrected your nemesis. Will was hardly my nemesis. Come on, Pear. You gotta admit, this is pretty cool. You reanimated a dead vampire and stuck a disembodied consciousness into him. What were you thinking? Gee, this should be pretty cool. But you, you can't just, you have to have, I mean, there are boundaries to, to science and, and to people's bodies and common sense. And when all of this goes horribly awry, I will be in the kitchen with the door barricaded, making cupcakes. Oh, cupcakes. I recall quite liking cupcakes. And make your own. Uh, you probably should have warned her. That whole staking will thing was pretty traumatic. Yeah, I didn't want her freaking out. Hmm. Excellent planning, me. This is just bizarre. Is Will still in there? 
I don't believe so, though I am awfully hungry. Thirsty. It's been quite a while since I've had sensation. Oh, ugh, the bad news is he's still a vampire. Come on, short stack, let's get you your own cup. Vampire? Oh, how exciting. May I join you on your lonely quest for redemption? Not if you want to keep your teeth. Man, Gus, is it always this frantic? Yeah, last semester my roommate turned out to be a vampire and things kind of escalated from there. Which is why, if you know anything about why Miss Belmond is planning on doing what she's doing next, then... You forgive me, Fräulein Holtz, but the company you keep does not inspire confidence. You mean Carmela? The Countess, former Countess Karstein is infamous. <laughs> Both as a ravager of virtue and a betrayer. I know, but she's changed. Well, of course, of course, not my place to tell tales. And unless, of course, you want to hear about my hunt for the mighty Yeti Migoy in the wilds of Tibet. Uh, no, I... that's okay. But you know stories about Carmilla? Oh, my family story. The Countess was promised to my great-great-grandfather, and he loved her. So that when she became a monster, he hid her and protected her. And she repaid him by killing all of his family and all those that he loved, leaving him to die alone and dishonor. It's just a, just a story, of course. Uh, distorted over time, I'm sure. <laughs> At Fräulein. Fräulein. Isn't learning history fun? Yeah. It's hilarious that our best lead won't help us because you massacred his ancestors. <sighs> this isn't working. We're never going to stop Maddie this way. Maybe what we need to do is what university students always do when skeezy corporations try and take over. Protest! The Zetas are pissed about their beer. The Summers are pissed about the Adonis Festival. Everyone's got to be pissed about the library. So I'll call up Kirsch and Danny and... You really want to ring up Agent Orange? <sighs> Look, can you not? I get that you're conflicted, but I just, I don't have the brain space to deal with you being all insecure and morally ambiguous right now. I need the kick-ass, heroic vampire girlfriend. So can you please just be that? Of course. Whatever you need. This is SNN with up-to-the-minute coverage of the protest against the Board of Governors, led by Silas's very own heroic Carmilla Karnstein. Uh, Silas for students. Silas for students! 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 Silas! I thought there would be more disobedience in our civil disobedience. I don't get it. Maddie should be here, flipping out and threatening to wear my insides as jewelry. Well, she's smarter than that. She'll just wait until we're exhausted, and then she'll go right back to her plan. By which I mean, go us, fight the bow, or... We're not giving up. We are in this as long as it takes. Are you guys hearing lost whispers? Where is that coming from? Is that Latin? On dark wings I come, and I will be the keeper of your death. Not liking that. Or that cloud over there. That's not a cloud. Get away from the window! What was that? Close. A lot of them. They came at the crowd and then at the window. Guys, we need you upstairs. The crows came after Perry. They came in through the windows. They were just everywhere. I, I mean, I'm not hurt or anything, but... And they left feathers and bird poop all over the... Yeah, that's the worst part of being swarmed by carrion birds, the cleanup. This is how the Dean tried to kill Carmilla. It has to be Maddie because of something you saw that night at the newspaper. Think, is there anything you no, saw there's that... nothing. Just dead bodies and all that blood. I... I just wanted to make some cupcakes and have, like, five seconds where people weren't cutting me up or 
reanimating dead bodies or using my friends in human sacrifices. Why is that too much to ask? If you need me, I'll be upstairs cleaning the guano off the hardwoods. Miss Perry, if there's anything I can Just do stay away from me! Both of you! God, why would she be trying so hard to kill Perry? If it wasn't something that she saw, then... then maybe something in the file, some weakness or vulnerability we can use to stop her. Can you think of anything? Carmen, we really need less sulking and more strategizing here. Do you even realize you're asking me to betray my sister? What? Well, my ears are burning. Sorry about your little Occupy Silas out there. The aftermath is looking downright Hitchcockian. If you think we're done here... Oh, you're done. You can pick it till your fingers bleed. The Silas Charter gives the board chair the power to do as she likes. Do you think a steak will do the trick? I'm not a two-century debutante. You can end with a toothpick or a quick beheading. And even if I were, that power the Charter gives me, not metaphorical. Now, will you behave? Or am I going to make the firecracker sorry she ever learned how to whittle? You won't, actually. What? I'm terribly sorry to intrude, but the decisions of the Board of Governors are not so much binding at the moment because the Charter requires a student body representative on the board. Please don't kill me. As if those squabbling children could ever agree on a representative. They'll agree on Carmilla. You feel like throwing yourself to the lions again, sis? It's your Rubicon. Of course she does! <laughs> you took on the Dean and the Anglerfish? You can totally go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her! No. What? No. I won't do it. Find somebody else to play your hero. What do you mean? I mean, no. Just because I was willing to risk my life to save yours doesn't mean I'm willing to betray my sister. Doesn't make me some crusader. Carm, why are you doing this? I need you to help. I'm doing this because I'd like to think that you could love me instead of some romantic ideal you've made up in your head. Romantic ideal? Because I think you're better than your long history of murdering and callously discarding people? Is that what you think of me? No, I... Uh, I didn't mean it like that. I just... What am I supposed to think when you're all... caring about people who aren't us as stupid, pop chart and... <laughs> remember that time we ate half a Saigon? Fun times. That's part of who I am, Laura. So is Maddie. You can't expect all of that to just evaporate because I love you. <laughs> If you really loved me, then you'd stay. I need you to be the kind of person that helps and fights. You haven't listened to a single word I've said. I'm done. Carm! Please, Carm! I can do it. The student rep thing, I'll take care of it. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. That's really, really great. I'm glad you're gonna be really great at the Laura. student rep. It's okay, I'm fine. I just, um, I just have a lot of things to do and so I need to do them. So I'm, I'm just hey. gonna. Hey, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think Carmen and I just broke up. And was I not supposed to want her to be better? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? I mean, it, it's supposed to go, you love someone. And I'm not even saying that I loved her because we were only together for like a month and that would be crazy. But if I did, wasn't she supposed to try and be better? I mean, the story goes, you fall in love with a monster, and then they stop being all monstery. They redeem themselves, right? The story isn't just fall in love with a monster. 
It would be a stupid story. I don't want to be a part of that stupid story. was embarrassing. Let's try that again with 80% less swallowing. We have an evil board of governors to thwart and a university to save. So the mess that I have made of my love life doesn't even rank. So, without further ado, here's Danny Lawrence, here to tell us all about her first meeting with the board. That is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. And Kirsch has been flirting with me for like a month. Do you think budget details could actually cause a person's brain to bleed? If it was going to happen anywhere, Silas would definitely be the place. Yeah. It's just, we know they're up to something evil with Corvey and the crater, but A, it's buried under 200 pages of paperwork, and B, even if we figure it out, we're a voted three to two. At least we're getting a good look at the players, though. Yeah, there's... There's Belmont, Vornberg, this guy in yellow robes who's there to represent the Haster mention. This lady with grayed out eyes who looks more like an owl than I'm really comfortable with, but the other two just vote the way Belmont tells them to. It's enough to make you miss the Dean. I mean, at least she was just flat out, upfront, monster worshiping evil. Yeah. Hey, thanks for being such a great friend about everything. Including not rubbing the whole, so you tried to date a vampire thing in my face. <laughs> For what it's worth, I'm sorry it didn't work out. Uh, so I'll just clear out of here. See you later, Hollis. Hey, you came back. I, I wasn't sure if you were gonna come back. Of course I'm back. This is my mother's apartment and I stole it fair and square. That's not what I meant. Oh, yeah, I know what you meant. But if you and your knight in shining gym shorts over there need more space, then you can find another room. Okay, one, there is nothing going on with Danny and me, and two, all of my broadcasting equipment is here, so if you don't want to watch me talk to my friends who actually care about the school and want to help me, then you can find another room. Dream on, Cream Puff. I'm not going anywhere. Well, neither am I. Fine with me. There's plenty of space. Good morning, gentle... viewers. <sighs> You know what's even less fun than having your blanket stolen in the middle of the night? You guessed it! Cohabitation with your ex! I mean, I know I had love goggles on, but did I really not notice any of this? The hair, in the shower drain, on the furniture, everywhere. The used dishes, the used blood bags, the used... Then there's her relationship to clothes, or lack thereof, which clearly she's just doing to drive me nuts. Not that it's working. And finally, the cherry on top of this whole Sunday of awesome. We all get to hang out with Carm's BFF, Big Sis Maddie. But if Holly Go Nightly thinks she's gonna run me out of this apartment that easy, she's got another thing coming.
What the creeping hell? I thought we might get along better if we established some boundaries. Boundaries? Yep. That's your side of the room, and this is my side of the room. Now you can be as gross as you want, as long as it stays on your side. Oh my god, you mean that. Do you think it'll work? What? Do you think your little line will hold back the nasty vampires? Do you think this will make sure you never have another thought you don't want to have about one of us? I'm pretty sure the blood mustache is going to take care of that. What the hell, right? Big Sis is just planning on killing us all anyway. Not that it's any of your business, but I didn't kill anyone. Maddie and I just had a little fun. Classy. Laura? Laura, we... What in the name of... It... Most peculiar approach to interior design. Reminds me of a family I met in Novgorod. Nope, nope, whatever. A couple crazies going on here. We do not have time for this. Belmont's making her move. She has a big vote scheduled for tomorrow. For what? She says it's an action under Section 23 of the Charter, but we don't have any copies of the Section 23. Mm, Miss Belmont's history with these sorts of affairs would tend to indicate something duplicitous, unspeakable, gruesome. There has to be some way to figure out what's in that missing file. You know, it's okay if you can't remember it. I ran your entire consciousness through USB cable. I'm fairly certain I know the document. The transfer seems to have left me with a photographic memory. Huh. Yay me. If I'm correct, Section 23 of the Charter describes the university's ability to sell or trade its living assets. Oh god. Please tell me that doesn't mean what I think it means. It looks as though, in addition to selling off the anglerfish, Miss Belmond intends to sell off 15% of the human student body. That's the one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry, I misread that. That should be 15% of the human students' bodies. 15% of, they can't just take 15 per, that's like 20 pounds, that'll kill people. Well, possibly a leg. I knew this Danish radio once had the most spectacular contraption attached to his uh, The text seems to indicate an area in the vicinity of the liver. Well, can't we just Merchant of Venice this crap, argue that they're entitled to 20 pounds of flesh but no blood? This percentage and all attendant materials and any and all collateral damage accrued in the collection shall be the responsibility of the student. God, lawyers are evil. Okay. Okay, so we warn everyone. We, we get them off campus. Because fleeing went so well last time? Or we band together. We have another rally. Did you see what was left of the rally after the crows? It looked like the end of a Tarantino movie. There may be a loophole. The charter allows for the removal of the chair by unanimous vote. Now, Haster Dude and Owl Lady are not going to vote to remove Belmont. Or if the chair is bested by another board member in conflict. I'm fairly certain my facing Miss Belmont in combat doesn't improve anyone's chances. In my youth, of course, I was a great fencer. It but doesn't say uh, trial by combat. It says conflict. I think the Baron could challenge Miss Belmont to a verbal debate. Well, that's a possibility. A debate. He could win a debate. Ripping. A filibuster. A war with words. I shall bend my wits to the task. You know, once in the High Court of France. Yeah, I... I I think we might have some work to do. That was the beginning of my great affair with the Grand Duchess Anastasia. A year and a half of caviar and vodka and torrid, torrid, rumpy, pumpy stud. How about that? You were supposed to be talking about funding for the repairs. Also, it was supposed to be a 45 second response. Oh, well, how, how long was mine? The last half hour. Oh. We need more documentation on the budget cuts. Can you see what you can pull from the newspaper files? Sure thing. Well, why didn't we just take another crack at it? When I was in the Prussian cavalry, that was our motto. 
Well, actually, it was Paradise on Earth is found on the backs of horses, but that almost got us into trouble. Or we could take a break. Of course, of course. I just want to see if the charming Frau Perry needs any help. We're doomed. Well, maybe the board will find the crazy Grandpa Stick endearing, and we are so, so doomed. Oh, you're not wrong. The Baron Funchausen has a better chance at wrestling a bear. You know what? Unless you have some great idea about how to save the student body's collective liver, why don't you just keep lost weekending? I'm sure all the partying and snacking on bystanders completely fills the void of your useless, apathetic life. Mmm, devastating. Clearly, I have no choice but to prove how wrong you are by hauling myself out of bed and saving your whiny ass. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. Maybe let's not throw ourselves at the centuries-old supernatural murder machine. But you do it all the time. Yeah, well, I work out. She's just doing it to get a rise out of you. Do all vampires turn evil after you break up with them? Is that like somewhere in their contract? Yeah. Hey, let's go see if we can peel the Baron off of Perry and give this another try. Perry, are you okay? Did you get hurt again? No, 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 I'm fine. I was looking through the files and I found these. Budget details? Why are you so no, no, worked no. up about- No, 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 these aren't budget details and you're gonna wanna take a look at them. Holy Hufflepuff. We're gonna win. Look, I may not know what you've got up your sleeve, but are you sure you wanna do this? There are a lot of things out there worse than Maddie. Gee, Carm, thanks for the input. But since you don't want to play the hero, maybe you should just butt out as we save ourselves. Good evening, and welcome to the SNN coverage of the Board of Governors debate. Facing off today are our board chair, Matska Belmond, a centuries-old, nigh-unkillable vampire, and honorary board member, Cornelius Hans Albrecht Lugenbaron von Vordenberg. We will start with questions from the students and then move on to the closing arguments, followed by a vote by the board on the winner. As decided by a coin toss, we will start with a question to you, Miss Belmond. How do you respond to the accusations that you intend to sell off a large portion of the student body's bodies? Darling, while your histronics are always amusing, the plan is to have Corvée catalog and evacuate the students. Removing their livers would depreciate their market value. Baron Vordenberg, a rebuttal? Oh, you will pardon me, madame, so this is an outright lie. What of the infamous Section 23 of the Silas Charter? Why, I have never encountered such perfidy since my battle of wits with the infamous Comtesse Lamont. Vordy, you know I lived through the stuff you're lying about, right? <laughs> Besides, if you and Big Red were capable of paying attention, you'd know we invoked the Charter to deal with the Deep One. The Anglerfish? We can't just leave it wedged in that cavern like an apocalypse waiting to happen. I know Mother wanted it sold to Corvée, but she's dead. And lately I've been thinking, maybe it's best we just collapse the whole campus and bury it alive. It seemed polite to evacuate the livestock before that. But that's evil! No, that's pragmatic. Well, maybe you aren't planning on stealing all of our livers now, but sooner or later it's going to be all freeze rays and massacres and the drama faculty tied to the railroad tracks. Even if that was remotely accurate. What are you going to do about it? This. See, those kids that you murdered at the voice of Silas? Are you still on about that? Turns out they were keeping really thorough files on you. So I just emailed the rest of the board your contract as a consultant for the Corvée. And if the 10% kickbacks you're getting from all these sales doesn't make them reconsider, then maybe the personal files you're keeping on them, you know, the ones detailing exactly how to kill them, will make them change their minds. Where the hell did you get those? Not the issue right now. The issue right now is I think we can skip the closing arguments and go straight to the vote. Danny, she's out. Bornberg's in. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Melbourne, but if history teaches us anything, uh, then... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Impeachment, overthrow, exile. And, of course, I will reluctantly accept the board's nomination. The rook falls to the bishop. You're making a terrible mistake. No, you did. When you thought you could come to this university and just take over. You may have killed those kids at the newspaper, but they still figured out what you were up to. Well, 
That is just neat. And now you're done. I bet it's gonna be pretty upsetting for the folks at home when I pull you apart like a kid with a Barbie. Maddie, no. Are you seriously not done with this gnat? She's a stupid, callow girl and she's gonna get us all killed. <laughs> I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> right. Uh, without further ado, Silas University, your new board chair, Mr. Cornelius von Albrecht Lugenbaron von Wartenberg. Cue the music. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh God. Uh, is he going to give a speech? Oh God, no. I am deeply touched by your sure support and faith. I have never, not even when the dearmen of the great forest made me one of their brothers, felt so called to aid and succor our community. I shall lead you and Silas to greatness, to the shining, glorious future it has always deserved. Wow, that was actually kind of... And for my first actress reigning board chair, I hereby order the immediate detainment of all individuals known or suspected to be vampires. Oh, crap. Hey, folks at home. Just a reminder that these videos are now only going out to my private list, so please don't repost. And given last week's less than unfettered victory... I hereby order the immediate detainment of all individuals known or suspected to be vampires. With Maddie's recently revealed scheming and her I'll get you next time style exit, the board was only too happy to vote the measure right in, in spite of some strenuous objections. You can't just detain people because they're vampires. That's like Species profiling. Well, your loyalty is touching, Fräulein Hollis, but misguided. Who was it that built this school as a feeding ground? Vampiren. Who was it incited la terror? Vampiren. Who killed my ancestors and forever blighted my family's hopes of rising to the Hoch de Del? Vampiren. Ah, even two days ago, Fräulein Casting was seen feeding in public on freshman girls. But she didn't kill them. She was just... Acting out. If even the most exemplary of vampires cannot control herself, containment is necessary. Look, I know that she's antisocial and amoral and far from perfect, but... You know what, Cream Puff? Don't do me any favors. If Mr. Burns here wants to see out of control, I'd be happy to oblige. Don't force us to steal your shroud and behead you, Fräulein! After Karm blew out of there, Vordenberg rallied the troops, mostly the Summers and the Zetas, for a full-scale vampire hunt, which would normally be a death sentence, but he seems to have them souped up somehow, like supernatural steroids. We still don't know what that's about. It's not all bad news, though. The sales to the Corvée Corporation have stopped, and the corporate strike team seems to have backed off. I just... I didn't mean for it to work out this way. And when I say this way, what I mean is... Good evening, fine students and faculty of our brave university. Tonight, I announce the opening of our interim student center and trauma unit, where, like an oasis of old, you can procure a new ID, enjoy coffee, or have physicians launch boils or apply leeches. And I once again denounce the vicious series of vampire attacks that have targeted those who supported my rise to chairman. My hunters and I shall be relentless in rooting out this and any other threats to the human students of Silas University. God, I don't even know what I'm supposed to feel. She should be better than all this lashing out, shouldn't she? And what if she gets hurt or something worse? Hey, Laura? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Do you need something? Uh, it's nothing. No big deal, really. Um... 
Somebody saw a panther dragging a body across the North Quad, and I just didn't want you to hear it from anyone else. I guess I should have known that something like this was coming. Well, why don't you come with me and we'll go make ice cream sundaes for dinner? No, thanks though. I think I just need to be alone for a while, take a walk. I will stay inside the building. Hey, Laura, do you wanna hang out with me and Jeep and... Oh, hey, Pear. Thought you were still hanging around upstairs, you know, avoiding me? I'm not just avoiding you. I'm avoiding JP, too. Miss Perry, if I could just once more apologize for whatever I've done to upset or discomfort it's you. It's not you, or either of you, or it's not just you, it's me. I just don't belong here. Everybody else seems to fit in. Carmilla's a vampire, Laura's in love with a vampire, and you're just excited about researching whatever unspeakable horror we've stepped in this week, and I'm just tired of being attacked and threatened and scared. We're all scared, Pear. I was bodiless in the library for more than a century. It was terrifying. God, why do you think I like to study stuff so much? If you dissect it, it can't hurt you. And if you'll permit, if I've learned anything facing the limits of my sanity in an epistemological madhouse, life is awful and incomprehensible. So it's usually better to be terrified together. You know, for a disembodied freak in a vampire body, you're pretty nice. Is anyone else as uncomfortable as I am with this level of physical contact? Extremely. Oh, yes, yeah. definitely. Well, if you want, we could go have ice cream for dinner. Oh, is there any more of that salted caramel gelato left? God, I wish it were that simple. I thought it was supposed to go, you love who you love and all of your other differences just fade away. You don't end up some 19-year-old girl with a broken door? All right, Lolita. Time to make yourself useful. Don't just sit there gawking at us. Get off your ass and help us. Oh my god, Carm! What happened? We were stalking some of Vordenberg's souped-up hench bros across the North Quad. It was a trap. They led us into a shooting gallery. Arrows everywhere. Congratulations, you finally got the Summers and the Zetas to cooperate. She managed to drag me in the bushes, but they put an arrow in her chest. I think part of it's still lodged in there. She needs blood. There's some in the fridge. I didn't have time to clean it up yet. Hey. Oh, sweetie. Here's some liquid courage. Oh. Maddie. Where did she bring me? Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's terrific to see you too. She needs a surgeon. Or someone who spends way too much time thinking about human dissection. Terrific! Wrestle up one of your mad scientists and let's get the show on the road. No. What? No. You guys are on a rampage, and I'm not going to risk my friends' lives until you and I have an understanding. Understanding? Try this on for size. Your value to me ends the second you can't or won't help her. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as soon as that happens, you're going to kill me in a way that would probably qualify as postmodern art. We've had this conversation. Only killing me, it's not going to help Carm. And as much as you flounce around like the spokes model for casual violence, you care about her. So here's how it's going to be. I'll call Laugh and JP, and they will help her, and then I will hide the two of you here until she recovers. And in return, neither of you is going to bite, maim, or kill anyone, at all, for any reason. Because if you do, I will have the Baron's army of steak-happy super minions down here so fast that you'll get whiplash. Understood? Understood. Get your friend. <sighs> Seriously, Laura, it is 1 a.m. Oh, hello to the chest trauma. We're going to need gauze and peroxide and possibly ether. 
Uh, vampire, we can skip the ether. Uh, Miss Constantine can bench press a Mazda. Will you be the one holding her down? Ether, cool. Maybe tranquilizer darts? Have you all lost your minds? They can't be here. They have been on a killing spree and there are people hunting them all over campus. She's getting blood everywhere. They're on their best behavior or I'll call Vordenberg myself. It might be difficult if they've ripped out all our throats. Vordenberg will kill them. Like she killed the kids at the newspaper? Oh, for the love of, I had nothing to do with your newspaper pals. I wasn't even in the godforsaken country until days after they were dead. Liar! You killed them. You cut me up and you tried to kill me. Uh, I never sleep anymore without seeing them, without seeing their dead eyes looking at me. And you did that, you did that, and the least you can do is admit it. If I'd done it, I would. You're still a killer. You've always been a killer. Uh, guys, patient being nigh and vulnerable makes thoracic surgery easier, but maybe lay off anything that shakes the floor, okay? Perry, I know your heart's in the right place, Laura, but you're really not thinking this through. Got it! First try. <laughs> uh, I'm always amazed at how much stuff is in there. And there's always those extra bits that I'm not quite sure what to do with. How are you feeling, darling? Like an overly enthusiastic veterinarian just played operation with my innards. Well, if that's the case, it's good we'll be staying put for a while while you recover. How did you get little Miss Tightly Wound to agree to that? She promised you were done with your little spree. Got to be kidding me. It was either that or take our chances with the Baron's juiced up army out there. Perry, I thought we were gonna talk later. Oh, we don't have time for that. We need to hide them now. What? The stormtroopers are coming. to see all of you. We're just in here for um, board games night. Seriously? It's after 1 a.m. and you're playing a rousing game of dusty squares. It's the ancient game of Sekhmet. Senate. Yeah, that one. Fun for the whole family. Dude, is there blood on the throw? Oh, 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 um, well, that just must have been from when I was pickling beets earlier. <laughs> We're sorry to bother you guys, but we cornered a couple vampires in the North Quad and we thought they fled this way. Uh, no, we haven't seen any vampires. Right, guys? True. Mm, no, no vampires here. Well, all right, then I guess we'll just keep looking. Are you seriously gonna let them get away with that? Get away with what? Pickled beets? Game night? Laura's my friend. If she says they aren't here, they aren't here. Yeah, I've heard plenty about how friendly you two are. Excuse Way me? uncool, bro. I know you've got your jock in a bunch because you're taking my orders, but you do not want to go there, muscle mouth. How about you start canvassing the next building over? We don't want the trail to get cold. Uh, Theo. Dude, D-Bear just gave us an order. Mm -hmm. Wilson, this hopeless crush of yours is uh, really starting to annoy. Mel, how about you go with them? Make sure they don't cause any trouble. You know, I can't believe you lost the election and I wound up taking orders from you anyway. <sighs> yeah, well, life's cruel. Always a pleasure to see you out. <sighs> Tell me you weren't lying. Tell me they aren't here. Do you need either of those statements to be true? Laura! I know, you're <sighs> already taking a huge risk covering for us with JP. I'm happy to cover for you. It's, it's not perfect, but things are getting better. And if they have some nefarious plot to end that... They promised they wouldn't hurt anyone. Because vampires are notorious for keeping their promises. She saved us. I, I can't just turn her in. If things go sideways, I will put you down for the first I told you so. Please don't make me use it. Danny, can I ask you something? In addition to covering for you while you hide vampires in your apartment? Yeah, sure. Um, do you really think that things are getting better? Well, 
Yeah. Mostly, yeah. Because we're starting to hear rumors. About what? That it isn't just vampires being picked up by safety patrols. That any classes Vordenberg doesn't approve of are being canceled. Well, half of our classes are still in hiatus. They detained Professor Cochran. Well, she did turn out to be a reanimated corpse of a reporter from the 1800s. She was still a good teacher. And all she did was question whether the searches and patrols violate student rights. It's just until things get back to normal. And you really think that's going to be anytime soon? I think we got this far. We can figure the rest out. In the meantime, be careful. Those aren't kittens under your floorboards. You knew? You moved the desk. <laughs> Real subtle. See you later, Hollis. Not that we don't appreciate the hospitality, but the accommodations leave something to be desired. Really? You aren't right at home with the creepy crawlies? We need to find somewhere else to hole up. It's only a matter of time before Xena drops the dime on us. No, there's no way that Danny would be okay with something like that. And there are patrols all over the campus. You should just stay here. Look, you really don't have to do that, oh, Grandpa. joy. Back with more recriminations. What the... <laughs> ah! Ah! Back! With holy water, I am done being afraid of you. You're gonna confess what you did or you're gonna die. No, stop me! Uh, say it! Say you killed him! Say you come here! Say you tried to kill me! Oh, I'm about to. Laura might be dumb enough to trust you, but I'm not. I know what you are. You are a poison! Perry, stop it! Reaching into our dreams, our minds, but I am not gonna let you. I am gonna burn you away! Perry! No killing! You promised! <sighs> you missed the part where Dorothy just tried to melt me. She's just terrified that you were gonna try and kill her again! <sighs> Is Perry okay? She's out, but she isn't bleeding too badly. <sighs> okay, so she isn't dead. No harm, no foul. No harm? You haven't even been here for 20 minutes. One of us already has a punctured jugular. You know what? Everyone, just shut up! It is almost two in the morning, and I am so tired. And you are right. Nobody's dead, and you're right. She attacked you first, and you're right. About anything, and I just, I... I just don't care. I am so tired. Tired on like a cellular level. So all of the vampires are gonna go back in their floorboards and we are gonna get Perry some first aid and nobody is gonna yell at me about any of my decisions until I have had at least 45 minutes of sleep, okay? Hey. Didn't think you'd still be up. Oh, Maddie's in a mood. Mood means ranting. I didn't feel like being a literal captive audience. Ah. Uh. How's Betty Crocker? Alive. Not that you care. Not that I care. So why me then? What? You don't care if Perry lives or dies, but you keep saving me. From your mother, from your sister, from yourself. She's a college girl in over her head that you've barely met. What makes her any different than I am? What makes any person sacred to another? Yeah, I felt really sacred when you were leaving discarded blood bags all over the apartment. I know it isn't pretty, but... That's part of it, too. She isn't mine. You are. To annoy or not. To love or not. To save. 
or not. Carm, you can't just- I know. You don't want any possessive vampire crap. You want reasons. The trail of thoughts and justifications that you can follow back to somewhere safe. You want the kind of love that clicks. Like a key into a lock. But I don't have any of that to give you. All I know is that in more than a century, you're the only person I ever found worth saving. You and no one else. It's not enough. I know. God, it used to drive me nuts when I would do things for you that were so clearly only for you, and you'd say, I know, <laughs> I know you didn't just do it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until I realized it was because you wanted me to be doing what was right for some reason beyond the fact that you wanted me to. I don't know what you want me to say, Carm. I wish I could say that it doesn't matter, but it does. Do you miss me? Like someone cut a hole in me. Good night, Carm. Good night. Under her shirt, Maddie wears a locket. Inside of it is a piece of her heart. That's what makes her impossible to kill. If she ever tries if she ever tries to kill you again, take the locket and crush what's inside. Hey, folks. So, as you know, the living arrangements in the former Casa de Dean have become unconventional. I am starting to feel like the host of Planet Earth, the vampires. Here we see the wily vampire emerging from its diurnal lair and engaging in traditional vampiric pastimes, pacing, needless threats of violence, irritability, dominance displays, and marathons of orange is the new black. Unable to hunt in captivity, the vampire must rely upon rations provided by its faithful minions and supplement its diet with scavenged foodstuffs. And awkward non-flirting with this girl they used to date and tell enormous secrets to. The colossal awkwardness aside, things are actually going pretty well. With Maddie and JP and Carm stuck here, the vampire attacks are down and most of the classes are up and running again. Though you don't get to go if you aren't 100% human and most of the curriculum has been aggressively edited. Shut up! The patrols for the day aren't through yet! <sighs> but until we can figure out what to do about any of that, <laughs> a far, far grimmer fate awaits me. My term two courses. Because the utter chaos on campus that has been going on for the last month and a half has not stopped the shiny new profs that Vordenberg hired from going zero to midterms in one week flat. So, if I intend to pass entry-level siege tactics, a course which used to be my philosophy elective, it is time to hit my Vordenberg-approved textbooks and... Danny! Uh, hey. Is this another patrol? Oh, no. Um, I was just in the neighborhood and I thought... You know what? It, it was stupid. I'll, I'll just go. You don't have to. Oh my god, are those apples? Uh, yeah. <laughs> We got in a shipment of them. I know how hard it's been to find anything fresh since the earthquakes. <laughs> I'll take that as a sign you like them. Thanks. I think I can actually taste the vitamins. You know, when I was a kid, 
I used to dream about eating nothing but chips and candy all day. Let me tell you, the disaster era junk food diet has ruined that dream for me. Oh no, I can get more. It's okay. Hmm. You know, as much as I love being comforted with apples, is there another reason that you came by? Um, I don't really have anywhere else to go. Ever since I ruined the festival, the Summers haven't really wanted me around. If I crash with the Zetas, it's only a matter of time until I break Kirsch's heart or someone's fingers. And no one seems to care about what Herr Baron is up to. Why are you studying catapult mechanics? Ah, apparently the trebuchet has more serious implications for modern thought than Hegel. Where did he find these profs? I don't know. This one lady used to be a Stasi, I think. Is that better or worse than him recruiting mountain villagers to help patrol? I don't know what time vortex they've been stuck in, but their answer to everything is torches and pitchforks. Is that person maybe a vampire? Torches and pitchforks. Did that boy try to steal a bicycle? Torches and pitchforks. Did the cafeteria run out of pie? Quiet disappointment. Oh no wait! Torches and pitchforks. Yesterday, they rounded up half of the alchemy club. I really thought we were making things better. And I hate how it's made things awkward between you and me again. I don't feel awkward. Really? You stood up for what you thought was right. You thought that was gonna make me like you less? Well, when you put it that way. Ugh, shush! Do you know if there's gonna be any more patrols? The flowers in the attic are getting restless. Yeah, you're probably in the clear. How are you doing with that, by the way? Uh, you mean the near constant threat of exsanguination or living with my ex? Both super fun. <laughs> Laura, if you're worried, I, I have a contingency plan. I'm safe. I promise. I don't want you to worry. Don't think you can stop me. <laughs> you have to come quick. They're hauling away the anglerfish protesters, and I think it's killing them. It's the Zetas and those Styrian townies with the torches. They're saying the protesters can't assemble in worship of an ancient evil god anymore. And that's a bad thing? Well, you do have to admit that all of them standing around the crater humming had a certain je ne sais cult. It's meditation. It soothes Lofi's endless suffering to hear their minds harmonizing. And, uh, well, that's not even the bad part. When the Zetas started hauling off the protesters, a bunch of them started seizing, like taking them away from the crater was actually killing them. And the ones that weren't started shouting stuff about the seven gates and the dead man in the shadows and how we were all food for crows. The gates and the crows again. Shouldn't that have stopped once we stopped Maddie and those creepy Corvée SWAT guys? And we still don't know why they're trying to buy up the campus. We really need more information about Maddie's plan about Vordenburg. But what in the pea-brained hell those Zetas think they're doing? Well, I know where we can start with one of those. Sorry, D-Bear. I'd totally tell you if I knew, but all I know is we're not supposed to let anybody near the big fish. And there's nothing else that you've seen or heard that seemed odd. You mean beyond being on guard duty for Moby Dick? Which is a weird name for a fish, right? Because he's totally not a di- This is low, even for you, Lawrence. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm the leader of Silas Student Forces. I can ask our lieutenants whatever I want. Oh, I see. Baron V sees the Zetas for the bastion of history that they are and assigns a special duty. Now you're feeling out of the loop and you take advantage of this poor dweeb's suicidal crush on you. I'm not taking advantage. I legitimately want to know what you double Y meatheads think you're doing messing with the anglerfish. Oh, you know what that's the sound of, Wilson? That's the sound of you being friend zoned. Hell, <laughs> not even friend zoned. She doesn't like you. She just knows you're dumb enough that she can pump you for information without even a whiff of play. Oh. Well, I mean, that's okay. You know, if Laura and D-Bear need to know stuff, well then, they should probably ask somebody and I'm not the smartest. Kirsch. <clears throat> for the love of Wilson, dig deep into that empty cantaloupe you call ahead and find some self-respect. Okay. What do I do with it? You don't think I take advantage of Kirsch having feelings for me, do you? No. No. Well, I mean, we do drag him down here every time we need to know what's going on with the Zetas. But even if you were, would you really feel that bad about it? 
I don't know. It's Kirsch. It, it'd be like being cruel to a golden retriever. We still need to figure out what's happening down in the crater. Yeah, the Zetas are a bust. So you know who that leaves. Boy, do I. All right, you know the drill. Give up the goods on the anglerfish and we hand over the tasty oneg. Be positive. Be positive. I would like to strenuously object to my inclusion in this interrogation. Sorry, Jeep, but you're gonna have to wait because if we hand you the plasma, you'll give it to Cougar Town over there. Oh, that's probably accurate, but I'm quite alarmingly hungry. We all are, Encyclopedia Brown. Doesn't change the fact that we still don't know what the old kook who you ladies made board chair, if I recall, is planning. Honestly, I'd be surprised if you remembered any plan more recent than the charge of the Light Brigade. But you had those Corvée guides drilling in the hole. You have to know something. I hate to be bothered, but the situation's becoming rather urgent. Carmilla? Oh, sorry, just flashing back to the last time you ineffectively tried to starve information Maybe out of if me. there could be just a little, a little something. That was different. How? Yeah, how? You're still withholding information that might save lives. What are you gonna do, Agent Orange? Tie me up again? <laughs> Oh, bad nerd! Bad nerd! Come here, Buckworm! Oh, oh God. Oh. I was so, so sorry, so sorry. That's gonna be a little more unbelievable when you aren't licking your fingers. <laughs> this, for future reference, is why you don't starve vampires. We need to know what she knows, and killing her is impossible, and I certainly don't know any differently. Are you really that excited to know what Vordy's up to by having him spring it on us fully formed? She has a point, Maddie. God, you're predictable. It's embarrassing. Uh, your master plan is hiding under the floorboards like a vampiric Boo Radley, and I'm embarrassing. Who knows what he's up to? I've never met a Vordenberg with a plan. The whole family is one unbroken chain of doddering fools. Well, at least you can tell us what you and the Corvée were up to. No, I can't. Maddie, just tell her. I really can't. My instructions were if anything happened to Mother, I was to return and facilitate the transfer of the campus to Corvée. And since Mother's dead, I can't exactly get clarification, now can I? Well, why would Mother want to sell the campus to some company? Corvée isn't just some company. They're huge and incredibly powerful. They hire thousand-year-old vampires as consultants. They acquire maimed demigods, honestly. I was shocked when they backed off when Vordenberg got elected. Maybe they didn't. They made a deal with one board member, why wouldn't they do it again? No. No way that old fanatic makes a deal with an organization like Corvée. Well, what could he do without them? The only things in that crater are an angry deep one and a soul-eating sword you dropped. So he raises a weapon he can't use or pulls up an angry deep one? <laughs> Even Vordenberg has more brains than that. Well, what about the gates? The Corvée guys were talking about them. I don't know anything about any gates. Although there are some fairly nasty concoctions someone who knew enough could whip up with the blood of a deep one. Like what? Mass hypnosis. Blood plague. Well, it's not great, but I mean... Spontaneous, universal aging. Contagious madness. Ooh. Setting the planet's atmosphere on fire. Yeah, oh. okay, so far, far better that Colonel Clink doesn't get his hands on the secret ingredient. So how do we stop him? It'd be a damn sight easier if someone had made him the chair of Silas University and practically invulnerable. There is a possibility, but you and I would have to figure out how to get past the Baron's patrols. To do what? To get a mani-pedi. My nails are shot. <clears throat> to get a weapon, genius. What kind of weapon? Not your concern, little girl. Of course it's my concern. We're supposed to trust you? Last time you were here, your great plan was to level the campus. It'd be better off if I'd leveled the campus. Do you think you're players in this? You, students of Silas University? You're the grass on the field. You're the leaves on the trees, you're mayflies. Just because I'm too practical to kill you for sport doesn't mean you aren't expendable, if need be. Are we clear? Come on, Carm. We should talk. We can't trust her, can we? We don't have a choice. Although her all your lives are expendable speech doesn't exactly fill one with confidence. Danny, I want to... I need to tell you something. Something that I am not supposed to know. Something very, very secret. And I need you to promise not to tell anyone or use it unless you absolutely have to. Of course. Of course I promise. Okay. Underneath... Laura, at the webcam. Oh. 
Great. Your vampire is incapable of telling the truth and will proffer deceit at every opportunity. I have lupus, they will say, or porphyria or rabies. Do not believe them. Remain vigilant, Silas. Well, at least if we die trying this, we won't have to keep listening to Radio Free Vordenberg. You still aren't sure? I'm not. Look, I mean, it's one thing to know we need the power in theory, but it's another to risk incinerating everything I know about myself. As though you're the same girl who died at a ball in 1698. As though I'm the same girl who lived in a grass hut by the river. Time has already changed us. Death has already changed us. And maybe who we truly are is what endures, instead of what falls away. Or who falls away. Are you really going to forego the pleasure of feeding that gas bag his own tongue? For the matchstick's chance that girl might love you? No one is I... feeding anyone their own anything. Not even Vordenberg. Ah, she wakes. And exactly why does Herr Baron get a pass? He's been up to no good as much as I was. We didn't kill you. That's because you couldn't. Oh, yeah? Look, I didn't kill you because that's not the world that I want to live in. In my world, you don't just kill someone to get your own way. You're a spoilt little girl. Ooh, let's be idealistic. Let's pretend the world is perfect. You know what the world is? It's a fight to the death. Either you have the power or you serve the power. If you think any other rules apply, they're blind spots that get you killed. You think you're the first person to say that? Give up, Laura. Your news broadcasts won't work. You can't find your roommate. You're not strong enough. Give up, give up, give up. I'm still here. Do you think you're special? Silas's first Nellie Bly or Lois Lane? Do you think all the girls before you died because they weren't as smart or as brave? The only difference between you and a long line of dead girls is the fact Mercala decided to save you. What do you think happens when she decides to stop? That's her decision to make. That's right, darling. You have a choice to make. Honey, I can't. More fool you. See you on the other side. What does she think she's doing? There are patrols of Vordenberg's mega minions everywhere. What does she think she's gonna go do? She's going down to the crater to drink the blood of the old one. She thinks it'll give her the power to fight Vordenberg if it doesn't kill her or drive her mad. And you were gonna do it too? I was considering it. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to be transfigured into an avatar for primeval forces of death and pain. Oh my God, she'll raise the school to the ground trying to kill him. We have to stop her, come on! <sighs> we have to stop Maddie before she reaches the crater. Danny and Laugh and I don't have to dodge patrol, so we'll head overland. Carmen JP will get as far as I can through the Dean's tunnels, and Perry, you stay here in case she comes back. I'm still not seeing the problem with letting her die. I'm still not seeing the downside in letting her kill Vordenberg. Because it's like putting out a house fire with a nuclear bomb. So let's find her fast, okay? Uh, Danny, can I talk to you for a moment? About uh, Laura? E yeah, sure. What's going on? You know what's going on. She's got us all headed out there, risking our lives to save some vampire who would think less about killing all of us than we would about squishing a spider. Oh, come on, Laura's just being Laura, trying to do her best for everyone. I know. But she never really seems to understand that these are vampires and not just some undertan scenesters with problematic diets. You have to figure it's only a matter of time until... Until... Until she takes the wrong risk. And I'm just hoping that someone is there to help her when she does. Always. So the good news is that Maddie doesn't seem to have made it down to the crater and gone all super saiyan. The bad news is that we have no idea where she is. So come nightfall, it is 
anybody's game. I can't believe there's no sign of her anywhere. Hey, Laura, and hey, Danny. Um, I got news. They just marched the little alchemy club kids into the crater and, um, can I ask you something? Is it more important than the evil plot? Well, no, but um, last time I was here, Theo said some stuff and um, I was just wondering, am I in the friend zone? Kersher, are you seriously asking me this? <sighs> Fine. Fine, if that's the only way that you can think of women, then yes, you have been friend zoned. Yes! I'm in the friend zone. What? I have made it into the friend zone. <laughs> Are you happy about this? Of course I am. I mean, yeah, I totally want more because, you know, you're super smart and way tough and smoking hot. But, you know, I get it. You're just not into me that way. And, you know, even if you don't like me the way I like you, I still think you're awesome. You're like the Joan of Arc. Of us. Why wouldn't it be awesome to be your friend? <laughs> Kirsch, that's really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am all up in your friend zone. <laughs> Please, never say that again. Okay, now, what did you need to tell Laura? Oh, right. The Corvée SWAT dudes are building this machine that looks like one of those dangly planet things had babies with a magnifying glass. They're gonna kill Moby's dick! So if Vordenberg kills the fish, why would that be bad? Oh, I don't know if I'm okay with Lofi suffering. By which I mean I can study it dead. I don't think it's that simple. Come on! Angry Sumerian demigod! Do you remember how effective our last attempt to kill it was? So Vordenberg tries and fails. I'm still not seeing the downside. Um, it gets loose and eats Europe? Or worse, he succeeds and its death throes drive everyone for a thousand miles insane. Maybe it rips a hole in the fabric of reality. Or maybe it hypothesizes into something far worse than we've ever seen. There's a reason Maddie decided our best bet is to just bury it alive. You know, just for once it would be nice to get good news for a change, like an accidental delivery of puppies, instead of fish murder and possible super vampires. What are we gonna do? I don't think we have a choice. We can't risk him killing it. How do we stop him? Our best bros are on duty 24-7. Well, there are still a few summers who trust me enough to help. I'll gather them up. If Kirsch can distract them with more of that weird fish spear, we'll sneak into the crater, sabotage the machine, and save Lofi. Just after 3 a.m.? Sounds like the only plan that we've got. So what are we supposed to do until 3? It's already been a long night. We should probably just try to get some sleep. Boom. You can't do that. You can't do that. Yes, I can. I rolled a four. Did you, did you? No, you have to go in the House of Beauty before you can land any further. If this game is supposed to be the underworld, then why is there a House of Beauty? Don't you think death can be beautiful? Oh my god, full of yourself much? Come on, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, you were totally going for the whole Belle Dome Saint Merci vibe. I am death, trod under a fair maid's feet. No, you're not. I was thinking what you said about Maddie drinking the anglerfish's blood. How you were gonna do it too. Do you think it would have killed you? I don't know. Would you care? How can you say that? Do you think I hid you here after everything because I don't care? Because the thought of something happening to you doesn't make me feel like I can't breathe. And I don't know how I'm supposed to feel around you or what I'm supposed to do because... I can't. Why not? Because right now, I'm really hoping that this means that you're gonna change. You kiss me and it, it cracks me open and all of my stupid, messy hopes come tumbling out and maybes and some days and how is that fair? Well, who the hell cares about fair? I do. Or maybe I'm just catastrophizing because 
between Maddie and Vordenberg, we are in the middle of a catastrophe. Maybe after everything settles down, we can talk. If we survive. If we survive. Sorry, but it's nearly three. We gotta hustle or we'll be leaving Danny in the summers in the lurch. Hi, Laura's viewers. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here, right? Aren't I supposed to be off helping to save the anglerfish? Yes. It's just... The thought of risking my life for some monster, I just... I couldn't, so... I stayed here. Dusted. Made some snickerdoodles. Passed out from exhaustion. Only... When I woke up... There were bloody footprints on the carpet, and I am scared that something very, very bad is happening. Oh, darling. I can pretty much guarantee it. Why wouldn't Danny have called? If she got delayed or there was another reason, what the? The door's wide open. Laura, those are bloody footprints. We do not run in the direction of bloody footprints. Maddie? What is she doing here? And where's Perry? 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 Miss Perry! Maddie, what did you do? Nothing, I don't think. Well, maybe not quite nothing. Who did I kill? You don't know? Are you all strung out on fish blood? I don't know. Last night is blurry. Oh, I'd be hoping it was Vordenberg, but there's no way the old man would bleed out that much. She isn't anywhere. What did you do to her? What did you do? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, that's awfully convenient, coming from the vampire covered in blood. God, do you seriously think that I, a centuries-old vampire, lost control and shotgunned your friend like a co-ed knocking back lemon drops just before passing out in the aftermath? <laughs> this isn't a crime scene. It's a setup. And of course, we're gonna take your word for it, Agatha Christie. We don't have to. We can go directly to the tape. What? The webcam's still on. I don't know if you noticed, we kind of suck at turning it off. Are you gonna kill me? I don't know. I haven't decided. It's been a weird night. Where did all the blood come from? You don't know? Well. This world can be a messy place. And if a girl's gonna get anywhere, she might have to spill a little blood. Or a lot. Now, we have a problem, you and I. Something isn't quite right. I can feel it, like a storm in the distance coming for us. And you, Miss Prim and Proper, you know something. How could I possibly know anything? You do. Someone killed your little pals at the paper, but not you. No, they send you messages. They send you dreams. Do you want to know what I see in my dreams? I see the great beast dead and the gates opening. I see the reign of hell on earth and the end of all things. The first gate wants strength, wants the rook. What? The first gate wants the rook. Are you playing games with me? Hmm. Do you really think that this is a game? Oh God, if you murdered her. Maddie? We are in so much more trouble than I thought. That was a death prophecy. And Rook is what mother used to call you. I did recall. Are you really telling me that Susie Homemaker started spouting a death prophecy and you just what? Packed her bags and sent her on her dream vacation? I don't remember. And even if I did, what does it matter? We have bigger problems. That wasn't just a death prophecy, sis. That was doomsday talk. The end of all things. I don't know about you, but I don't really look forward to returning to the primordial abyss without form. I don't really like being more than a four-hour flight from Paris. We've wasted enough time. 
We need to get the situation under control. Control, I quite agree. We can't have vampires running around murdering students. This isn't the Balkans, after all. And I have to say, I am heartily ashamed of you, Miss Hollis, harboring these dangerous creatures and putting all our lives at risk. Danny, how could you? She... She killed them. The girls. The sisters who are going to help us destroy the machine. Eight of them. We were supposed to meet in that little grove across from the crater on the North Quad, but when I got there, they were dead. All of them. Just laying there with their throats ripped out. I'm sorry, Laura, but somebody has to stop her. I made a deal. Tell him where they were hiding, and he'll stop with his plan to kill the anglerfish. With the safety patrols, with all of it. You little fool. Oh, no, Miss Belmont. Don't you think sour grapes are beneath you? We Rodenberg tolerated your high-handed edicts on the board with good grace. Like the staunch Roman senator. Oh, for the love of God, shut up! I'd rather have my toenails pulled out with rusty pliers than hear you speak. The great adventurer, the great warrior, the great lover. As if you've done anything but spend your family's money and wine. Yes. Perhaps I do embroider from time to time. Or sometimes the truth is insufficient to the needs of one's soul. Life is full of humdrum humiliations, battles lost, lovers who disappoint. Why not imagine it better? Why not tell a story? If it helps you believe that just beyond the horizon there might be some great adventure, some chance to be the man you've always wanted to be, to be Baron Vordenberg, vampire hunter, chair of the board of Silas University, God. Layer. What? And there it is, kids. Oh. <laughs> no need to mock. In mere minutes, I will have achieved something that neither the board nor your exquisitely malevolent mother ever managed. I'm going to slay the great beast of Silas. But you promised. You said you were going to go through with it. You... Ah, yes. Well, um, you see, I was fibbing. But you can't... <laughs> is this actually surprising to you? His official title is Lugan Baron. It literally means Baron of Lies. You can't. We don't know what okay, might happen. Can anyone else hear that? Yeah. I, I, I think I can. It's like, um... By now, the heroic citizen soldiers of Covey have the great machine in place. And when the sun is at its zenith... Pathetic creatures! Do you think you can kill what has risen from the deep? We should have crushed your crawling bodies. We should have burned your minds. Young persons, it is hardly polite to interrupt a public official when he is... If blown. we die, the gate will open. You will die in blood and fire. Are we all about to die or what? Seems not. We were due for a break. Are they? I don't think so. They're out. Kirsch has a pulse. The world in danger of their lives. You have students. The beast is slain. The only terror confronting us now is a health hazard caused by approximately a thousand tons of spoiled fish. Can we sell it as canned tuna, do you think? Well, bully for you, you didn't kill us all. But the anglerfish isn't the one who killed eight students last night. Nine. Perry's missing too. And let us not forget the brave journalists of the Silas Voice. Do you have any idea how sick I am of being accused of murder sprees I didn't even get to commit? We know it was you! Oh, you must expect her to tell the truth. This sort of deceit runs through her veins like the blood she leeches from her victims. But have no fear. Now that she is in our power, she will be tried for her crimes at... <laughs> <laughs> Frivolity will not stay your execution, <laughs> Miss Belmont. Sorry. Last night's just coming back to me. Turns out, God blood really packs a wallop. You know, since I've arrived, I've been gracious. I've been reasonable. I've been civilized. But all you idiots do are accuse me of murder after petty murder as if I would bother with one or two or 20. I'm gonna carve a red swath through your army. I'm gonna drink this nation dry. I am death on dark wings. You wanna blame me for carnage? 
I'll show you, Carlin. Ah! Not until you answer for my sisters. Come here, Ginger Snap. That temper of yours is gonna put you in a bind someday. Oh, God. And of course, a reminder for any students looking to join the Anglerfish Preservation Society, don't. We're still not sure some form of mind control isn't at play. Which means you have no control over your actions anyways. So if you're down by the Lustic Crater, humming and swaying in unison, don't beat yourself up about it. Good night, and good luck, Silas University. <laughs> Was that, did you just make a joke? And are you laughing at it? If you can't make a joke about a giant evil fish god, then you don't understand comedy. <laughs> oh, Gidget. I know you're in the midst of angsting about how you and Angel Pants over there are star-crossed, but that is no excuse for losing your sense of humor. Says the sociopath trying to kill me. Says the sociopath who hasn't killed you yet. <laughs> you know how one survives for centuries? You stop judging. There's almost nothing in this world that's absolute. Take this whole, Carmilla massacred the Vordenbergs. Sit your tiny panties in a bunch. You mean how his ancestor loved Carmilla, took care of her, and in return she killed his whole family? Sure, if by ancestor you mean necrophiliac, and by loved, grave robbed her undead body. Any Vordenbergs Carm killed crawling out of that creep's dungeon had it coming. <sighs> Carm, why didn't you say something? It was humiliating. But, you know, I did kill his whole family, so bygones. See? You'll be surprised what one can learn to coexist with. And, generally speaking, coexistence is better than a fight to the death. Ugh, you are such a utilitarian. It's gross. Nihilist. Existentialist. Absurdist at best. Whoa, I will show you absurd. <laughs> <laughs> That was unexpected. What do I do? Tell me what I do. I think you've already done it, darling. Camilla, I need you to listen to me. I didn't kill those girls or the students at the newspaper. That means somebody else did. Someone who would do anything to make sure Mother's plan still went through. Even kill me. I didn't think she'd kill me. Run. What? Run. I am going to hunt, torture, and kill you. And it won't be satisfying if it ends too quickly, so you need to run. If you want to kill me, you're going to have to do it right here, right now. Fine. No! Laura, get out of the way. No, it's not her fault! Get out of the way! No, Maddie was going to kill her! She had to! Get out of the way! I'm the one who told her how to do it! And you know it. You know it's my fault. God, she was right. You are a selfish, callow girl. And I am the fool who trusted you. I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Three hundred years of friendship. Can you even imagine? We saw Electra in Paris in 1709. The ruins of Pompeii. We watched the moon landing. All those memories. All that life to end like this. For what? For you. Carm, please. Be good for me, Carmilla. Change for me, Carmilla. 
burn down everything you've ever loved for me, Carmilla. That's not fair. I didn't ask you for any of Stay this. away from me. The next one of you who comes near me, I swear to God, I will kill. What did I do? Oh, well, he killed Maddie and flipped Carmilla to the dark side. Sorry, having a dying god in your brain kind of messes up your sense of tact. She's never gonna forgive me. Hi, guys! Pear! Pear, you're alive! You're, where have you been? I don't know. One minute I was here, uh, baking, and then I um, woke up on the north side of campus by the quad. I tried to get back sooner, but there are more mobs on campus than usual today. What'd I miss? Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh yeah, we are epically screwed. You dudes are never gonna believe this, but I think I just saw Will in the hallway. Funny story, actually. Students of Silas, I have struck two great blows for our safety and liberty today. Having slain the great beast of Silas, and rooted out the lair of the vampirishes Belmond and Karnstein. Silas's valiant troops rally for an assault on the villainous Dean Citadel, where we will capture and put to the sword these traitorous accomplices. Okay, so just to make sure I have this straight, the Baron and his goons are coming to kill us. Carmilla's gone, we have no weapons and nowhere to run. I'm also thinking you've got some serious PTSD, or maybe that's me. We don't have time for crazy right now. So less disturbing lack of emotional affect and more finding things wide enough to nail across the door frames. Chop, chop! This isn't your fault. It's all my fault. The anglerfish rising, Vordenberg in charge, Maddie getting killed? That had to be done. She killed a lot of people. She was going to kill me. Look, I know we're in trouble. But when you're the only one trying to fix a messed up situation, maybe it's not all your fault when things go sideways. Yes, yes, very touching. Here's a hammer and nails. See if you can get these slats across that window there. I know that Danny wants to let me off the hook, but I belong on it. I am Captain Hook. <laughs> I just keep on thinking that there's right and then there's wrong and that I'm doing the right thing, but I just keep on making all of these messes. And this whole time I've been pushing Carmilla to be better and be good. Only I'm the one that betrayed her trust. Betrayed something she only told me to keep me safe. How is that good? How is that the right thing to do? How am I anything but a hypocrite saying that right and wrong are whatever I want them to be and not caring how much damage I cause? Carm? Perry? What are you doing with all those scary looking books? Research. Research? Laura, I don't know if you've noticed, but we're losing. And we've been losing for a while now. Everything we do seems doomed. We crammed poor JP into a body that he hates and can't control. LaFontaine had an evil fish god stuck in their brain, which we did nothing about. We need a plan. We need something. And this is the Dean's house. And who would have more books on terrifying things than the Dean? What the? Is that? Wow. It is a really big black cat. Why do you think it's headed for the anglerfish crater?
Carmilla. What does she think she's doing? The technical term is mauling. She's headed for the crater. She's gonna drink the god's blood. No, she's not gonna make it look. They're driving her back. She will make it eventually. Question is, who will she come after if she does? The Baron or us? How weird is it that we're back to wondering whether Carmilla wants to save you or kill you again? Fontaine, don't. Don't what? Point out that Laura's been lying around in the siege pining after her vampire lover? I am not! Totally are. You're the piniest pine who ever pined. So, it has been brought to my attention that there has been some moping and lying around feeling guilty which even if completely justified, does not help anything. And so, Silas University, welcome to Le Résistance. Our top story, Lord Vordimort is lying to you. In addition to the ongoing arrests of any non-human students and attempting to break into this building with battering rams to muzzle the free press, we are also receiving reports that Vordenberg's goons are chopping down trees in the thief Erwald in their hunt for Carmilla, who today made another bid for the elastic. In other news... <laughs> nothing. Nothing on Vordenberg, nothing on the Corvée, nothing on the Seven Gates. Except for the fact that people believe that there's an entrance to hell in southern Pennsylvania, which so does not help us in Austria. How are we supposed to come up with a plan to save ourselves with nothing? Hey, what about the minutes of the board meetings in 1904? 1904? Is in the time the campus burned down 1904? Yeah. Well, what's in them? Roll call. <clears throat> uh, Belmont? The Baron's dad, uh, the Hastramenshin, who seemed to be some kind of evil monks, um, that owl lady doing her prescient and unnerving shtick, uh, Vordenberg Sr. talking about a fishing trip. Here, it looks like some students noticed the patterning of missing girls and rioted. I wonder if JP remembers that. Jeep was still trapped in the library catalog, which in 1904 was handwritten. He says it was a dark time. Oh, this is interesting. It looks like the dean put forward a motion to try and kill the anglerfish. What? And the board overruled her. They didn't want to risk it. That makes no sense. The dean was down with the fish love, not all, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Well, maybe she was only sacrificing people to keep the beast asleep because the board wouldn't let her kill it. Well, it is a little weird that the dean wanted the fish dead and now it is dead. Hey, if the dean was fighting with the board, maybe that's why Maddie had all the files on how to kill the other board members. You're a genius. I'd agree, but why am I a genius today? Because somewhere in these files is a way to stop Vordenberg. Given the Baron's threats, we'd like to recommend that anyone not yet in his custody... Once again, brave students of Silas, I exhort you to ignore Fraulein Hollis and her seditious opinions. And I assure you that she too will soon be in custody. Sir, it's that giant cat again. Regardless of the felonious assaults of her feline paramour on Vordenberg forces. If you'd like to relocate, sneak snack mumpets, I do not take orders from some boy. Fetch me my blunderbuss. If I assault the last saber toothed tiger, I can damn fair shoot her. We're running out of time. We need to figure out how to free the students and escape. Oh, 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 oh. We could do like a full on Butch and Sundance uh, frontal assault. Kirsch, the Bolivians killed Butch and Sundance. Ah, they just were freeze-framed in their mo moment of action movie glory. Did you want me to... No, no. Let them have it. Look, between the Zetas, the Summers, and those whack job steering villagers, we are seriously outnumbered. We need help. What about Corve? They seemed well-staffed and ruthlessly efficient. Uh, I think throwing in with the soulless occult resource conglomerate that the Dean wanted controlling the campus is literally the only thing worse than what is happening right now. Have we found anything in Maddie's files? Vordenberg's only human. The problem is that he's the chair of the Silas board. Though, there was that note about the chair receiving their power from the Silas charter? Maddie said that too, that her power literally came from the charter. Can we use that, like destroy it? That could work, though we'd need to get the original charter, and who knows what that might do to him. 
something gruesome if we're lucky. Hey, are you feeling okay? Ugh, what do you two toadies want? We need your help. Sorry, I just vomited in my mouth a little bit. Uh, look, we made a mistake, okay? I wanted the vampires gone and the Zetas back on top, but this is bad crazy. He almost blew my head off today trying to kill Catwoman. And what do you want us to do about it? We're outnumbered by the angry villagers, but there are almost 500 students caged up in the catacombs. They don't trust us, but if you ask them, they'd fight. And then we could take back the school. We'll sneak you across the lines to the catacombs and then go rally our guys. Or you'll just grab me and take me right to Vordenburg. It's a risk for all of us. Any one of us breaks and we're done. Look, I don't know about you, but I did not become a summer so I could serve some old man in a rabble of bullies and cowards. Do you trust them? No. It's still our best shot. What if it's a trap? I should go with you. If it is, I don't want them hurting anyone but me. Please don't say that. I don't think I can stand losing anyone else. You're saying that because you're scared Maddie and Carmilla are right. That the world is vast and meaningless and the better world we want is just a naive dream, but that, that world is worth fighting for. So we don't get the perfect happy lives. I'm ready to suffer and die as long as it's for the right reason. The right person. Oh, oh, oh. Theo's giving the sign to bear. It's now or never. I know you're furious. I know that what I did was a betrayal and maybe unforgivable and that you're probably gonna have to hate me for as long as I'm alive, which really isn't seeming like much of a stretch right now. And I know that you don't wanna to listen to anything I have to say. So here's my pitch. Help us anyway. And not because I'm all righteous and looking for you to redeem yourself or some pure-hearted lady fairy you're trying to win. Because if this semester has taught me anything, it really is that I have no business trying to be righteous. Everything that I've ever done to uphold what I think is right has caused so much damage. And I don't want to do that anymore. Because it makes me just like Vordenberg or like the Dean was. So dead set on what I think is right that I'm willing to risk anything or anyone for it. And I hope that you know that I never meant to sacrifice Maddie or you. So here's what I believe now, that the best thing that we can do with whatever strength we're given is to help each other, to be as kind to each other as we can. And right now there are a whole host of people who need our help. And not because they're human or not, or good or not, but just because they need our help. And so, it doesn't matter that it breaks my heart that you hate me. It doesn't matter that you're gonna have to hate me for as long as the earth is drowned because right now, we can do something. We can stop the damage. Help us. What do you want, Laura? Uh, hey! How are you these days? Are you still all you, all non avatar -y and stuff? So far. Uh, cause you look great, all furious and brooding and... Say, is that the library? What do you want? You heard what I said. I meant it. Please help us. You're a lunatic. You're in this mess because I am anything but a hero. I have spent the entire semester proving to you over and over that I am nobody's hero. And your answer to that is to double down and beg me to be one? Yes, help us. You're insane. Quite possibly. Help us. 
Have you ever considered that maybe Hero isn't one thing that one person was supposed to be by themselves? That maybe in this story, you are my hero and I'm your hero. That maybe it's all of our responsibilities to be heroes for each other. Or maybe this isn't a story, Laura. Maybe this is just life. Where there are no heroes. Where sometimes evil just wins. Full stop. The universe doesn't care whether you live or die. You just do or don't. Depending on whether or not you're strong enough to survive. Well, I say believing in your friends is a kind of strength. No, it really isn't. Okay. Okay, then. That is how it is. That is just how it is. Laura, it started. Danny's leading the prisoners across the South Lawn. It's reasonably epic. I'll just bet it is. I guess we should go help her then. Fine. God damn it, what do you want me to do? Laura? Are you still there, Laura? Sorry, dear. She doesn't want to talk to you right now. Perry, are you coming? Be right there! <laughs> okay, just for future reference. Mm -hmm. When the enemy has pitchforks standing on a wall yelling, can't touch us from our dudes, it's not safe because they can throw them. Yeah. Okay, okay I know that now. Okay. You know what? I'm good here. Why don't you just... What are we going to do? Don't get dead. That is not a plan. <sighs> you know, I really thought Carmilla would change her mind and come and help us. You know what? Who cares? So Carmilla isn't going to get off her lazy amoral butt. That's old news. I say we don't need her. Does that mean it was coming to save us? Fine. We can save ourselves. Save Silas! Uh, uh, me up, she needs me. Yeah, but you're kind of bleeding all over everything, so maybe I go instead, okay? That's okay. I think I got it covered. No, I'm not saying I'd like props for having done all that with broken ribs, but... <laughs> Danny? D Bear? Sorry, Lawrence. The old man may be crazy, but he gave me a better offer. He gets his new school, and Zeta Omega Mu will be his right hand. No vampires, no monsters, no sum is just us ruling the school the way it was always supposed to be. I'm gonna get you, you backstabbing, lying son of a- ow, ow, ow. <coughs> Did that little shaste Vizel just stab me? Well, that sucks. Danny? No, no, Danny. It's okay. I mean, what I said before. That it's worth it. And I'm not scared. Okay, you remember that. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not. You? How could you? She helped you! She trusted you! Yeah, well, she should have known better. <gasps> Lawrence, we need your bony ginger butt back out there. The Zetas are turning on us and... Oh, no. In the back. You didn't even have the decency to give her a fair fight. I could have lost. That would have been unacceptable. Come on, you didn't even like her. She was a summer. And now she's dead. With her gone, the resistance will scatter. And between the villages and my guys, you are seriously outnumbered. Surrender now, and we'll let you live. 
I'd rather see how many of you I can take with me. No. You have to surrender. Danny would have... She would want her summers to live. You should listen to the shorty. She's got a point. I'm taking her body. For her funeral rites. You grant us safe passage and then you get your deal. All right. Kush, you are the worst brother Zeta and Megamu has ever had, including the vampire. You're not my brother. It's okay. Look, I'm not pretending that I liked her because she was a self-righteous wannabe martyr. But she was brave. And she was strong. And she was a summer. And she deserves her pyre and her songs. Laura, Laura, you'll never believe what Perry just found. It was pretty unbelievable. It was nothing. It was far from nothing. How you found that secret room? It doesn't the... matter. Danny's dead. It's over. We lost. Oh, God. Victory! Laura. Oh, the valiant forces of the Bordenberg Academy are sweeping to our campus, driving our enemies before them. Tonight, we will celebrate with the illustrious opening ceremonies of the Vordenberg Academy. You will bear witness as I eradicate the Silas board from the earth, and then redeem my family's honor through the public execution of the vampire who shamed us, the infamous Macalla, Countess of Karnstein. Carmilla, you know. I am very much going to kill Carmilla. I'm sorry, I expected more angst on that. Let's try it again. The execution of Carmilla Karnstein. We heard you. Wait, what? You beg me to come and save you. And I do, even though you blew me off by way of I Doris blew you off. I wasn't the one who was all, evil wins, Laura, it just wins. Well, guess what? You didn't come and it did. Danny's dead. What? Illustrious victims, our friends of Corvair have prepared the necessary rituals for your extermination. Have you any last words? <laughs> Sounds like it might go on for a while. Um, just shoot them. I've done it. Perry, this is the Silas Charter. Where did you get Never this? Never mind that. Destroy it, and he'll be obliterated along with it. Obliterated? He's gonna I... kill Carmilla. Can you really let that happen? After all these years, the Vordenberg Academy will be born. With her statue of me at the gate. Baron Vordenberg. Conqueror of Silas, founder of the Academy, slayer of vampires. And I'll be tasteful, all basil and weathered brass, and in it I shall be holding your severed head. I bet you wish you'd married my great-great-grandfather now. <laughs> I prefer dying. I can't let you do that! The Silas Charter? I mean it, I will! No, you won't throw in Hollis. Because you and I are the same. You believe not in the harsh truth of the world, but in a beautiful story. You can't kill me, because that isn't what a heroine does. Not in the world that you want to live in. Also, with every other member of the board dead killing me, would effectively transfer all of Silas to the Corvée Corporation, undoing everything that you and your friends have fought and died for, and for what? <laughs> this creature... <laughs> oh. oh, schnick schnack.
Tear gas. He, he wasn't kidding about the Corvette. They're coming fast. We gotta get out of here. Passages. Perry, where's Perry? We can't leave without her. You, you, you get to safety. I'll find her. Oh my God! What did I do? Nothing you can't spend a long life regretting somewhere else, Cupcake. surveillance state. You can update till your heart's content and complain about how you're stuck with me as a roommate again. I thought the library was gone. How did you find it? It found me. Perry should be here. And, and JP, they were right there. And I just... We'll think of something. I killed him. I killed him, and we lost Danny and Perry and the whole school. You did what you could. What are we gonna do now? I really don't know. You've got to give it up to the mad scientist. Less than 36 hours to set up an ethernet cable in a non-Euclidean space. Although the fact that radical light's starting to talk to the walls is a bit troubling. Also the fact that they seem to be talking back. Yeah. Okay. Are you hungry? Because, you know, I found a vending machine on the first floor, so now I've got chocolate and chocolate with bits of cookies in it and chocolate with some kind of fudge-like substance stop. that I'm... Oh. Please. Stop. She speaks. I was beginning to worry you'd forgotten how. I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. Come on. Do you really think whatever deep dark you've got going on in there is enough to scare off a vampire? I killed him. Yeah, I'm not really complaining over here. No, you don't understand. I fought so hard trying to fix this place. We lost so much trying to save it. Your sister, Danny, and... And the moment came and I killed him. I burned that poor man to the ground and... I didn't care. When I thought he was gonna kill you... I didn't care. I just wanted to save you. And now Perry and JB are missing, and <laughs> who knows what the Corvée are going to do to those poor students. And I lost. I lost us everything. I feel like I lost myself. You know, saving the world would be a whole lot easier if you could just remain innocent. If your conscience was always clear and you never made mistakes. But a moment of forgetting to care isn't the same as a lifetime of apathy. 
Okay, and yes, you you made a mess. But Vordenberg and Maddie and I, we all had we all had a hand in this and you didn't do it alone. I might not always like the choices you make or the way things turned out. But I think it would be infinitely more tragic if you let that stop you from trying. If you let it turn you into me. I don't even know how anymore. Ever since we got back, nothing's been going right. I, it's like someone's been ahead of us this whole time. I don't know. It's like those chess games I used to play with Mother. You'd think you were winning right up until the moment you realized she got everything she wanted. You know what's sort of funny is that she kind of did. I mean, she wanted the board out of the way. She wanted the corvée controlling the campus. She wanted the anglerfish dead. If the dean weren't, you know, dead, it'd be her party. But she is, though, dead. I mean, totally very dropped a boulder on her Disney villain dead, right? Right? We could live forever and suffer audience. I have been thinking about what a wonderful tool these videos are to generate empathy, to show your side of the story, because I just, I can't help but feel that there's a part of the story still missing. Could Maddie really have murdered those little journalists? The Summers? Could the Baron have done it? What if something else has been happening all along? 
Something that started all those nights ago when that wretched little moppet cast me into the pit. And I had to find alternative accommodations. At first I wasn't too thrilled with Raggedy Ann here, but she grew on me. <laughs> After all, who would suspect dear, darling <laughs> little... In here, Kirsch! <laughs> No, no, not on the, the blanket. I, that really is going to be unsalvageable. I did what you said. I smoked her off the fire and I kept her body cold. And... You think you can save her? Because if she's really dead... Shh, 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 shh. Don't fret, sweet boy. Do you want to know what the most important quality in the world is? It's patience. Wait long enough by the river's edge and the bodies of your enemies will float by, and I have been waiting by this river for a very, very long time. Of course, when the moment comes, you also want decent help. Ma ushela mituti ikan baututi. Danny! Are you... Are you okay? Because you were dead, and I just couldn't stand it. is out of my way. The Deep One is finally dead. And my associates at Corvée control this university. The first gate is opening. Six to go. You see, good things do come to those who wait. So get some rest, Silas University, because it's gonna be one hell of a summer. Shella, me to tea, eat